You're about to listen to Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games. It's a comedy video game podcast. We would like to stress that the hosts are not experts and are really just very crass commentators. Seriously, this is an explicit podcast that happens to talk about video games sometimes. So please enjoy this pretty okay podcast with Tyler and Dave. Hello, Internet. Hey, welcome. Hey. It's another episode of Tad Pog Podcast. It's us. Tyler and Dave play old games. Just us. Just us. Just me and you. It's, yep. Classic. Vintage. Dicks, dicks come, buttholes, fingerings. Classic. That's classic. Cla- that, okay, classic. I stand corrected. That is classic. <laughs> now, now this, classic. Is, this is not now going classic. to be classic. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, go, go back, listen to our stuff from like five years ago if you want that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll back to... when we had stories before we got old. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, we're out of stories now, and uh, I mean, I'm under strict guidelines about what I can, what I can and cannot talk yeah, about. Yeah, now we do like... That's really fun true. shit that we don't talk about because <laughs> we're in permanent relationships. Yeah, because we want that shit to continue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we don't want to put any of that at risk. Shit now is way more raw. Oh, God, it's so Can't much, talk, it's really so much it. better, you guys. You got to believe us. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today we're going to talk about Disney's The Jungle Book. For the Super Nintendo, the Jungle Book, courtesy of the Randomizer. Yeah, it's the first. Is it the first book that the Randomizer has, has given us? Or were we supposed to play a video game? I mean, that's not, yeah, we could have just read what <laughs> Rudyard Kipling did. He write the uh, yeah, original yeah. A poem. Uh, well, there were like poems at the start of each book. Okay, and then like, then there was like yeah, like little short stories. Yeah. Okay. And then I guess there was a Jungle Book two that he wrote, and then there was also a Jungle <laughs> Book two movie that Disney did. Uh, straight to video, probably. Probably is my guess. I did see the live action Jungle Book, and that was that was very good. Now I'm gonna I might blow your mind. I don't know. I blew my own mind. Blow it, baby. Uh, I blew myself. Um, <laughs> which live action Jungle Book? Because apparently there was another one. Oh man, the one with Christopher Walken is Louis. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I liked that one. Yeah. I liked that one. Apparently there was one around the time this game came out. Oh damn! Yeah, which I didn't know about because it's like when I started like doing research on the game. Here's my th- my deal. It was like, oh man, we're back was such a fun fucking episode for me because I found that like oral history of we're back a dinosaur <laughs> story, and it's like fuck yeah, I bet I can find something like that for Jungle Book. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> what, I mean, I'm sure it exists, and it's like. In my research, I found, well, if I can get my hands on the 40th anniversary DVD double disc set platinum, there's commentary on that. Where that John Malkovich to. was supposed to be Louis originally. Yeah, right. Louis Armstrong <laughs> was supposed to be Louis originally. And then Walt Disney was like, oh, sure. ah, people might take that the wrong way. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and do it. Because <laughs> right. I'm Walt Disney. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least that, it, see, that, that's also the thing that I was going to say is like, so like a lot of the information I got about the the history and the making of the Jungle Book, the animated mm-hmm. uh, movie from 1968, I think, somewhere that in that sense. range, um, was all that information is from IMDb. So it's like, I don't know if it's true or not. I mean, I can edit IMDb, so I don't, you know what <laughs> I mean? True. It's like, Kari, oh, People Kari, are... was in Jungle Book? <laughs> oh, my God. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I must have missed, oh, a deleted scene where Kari is in Jungle <laughs> Book and does backflips <laughs> off of Princess Peach's heart-shaped bed. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Louis Armstrong, according to IMDb, mm-hmm. Louis Armstrong, we're like, we want Louis Armstrong to be Louis, King Louis. And then, yeah, they were like, uh, apparently, uh, allegedly, Walt Disney was like, guys, I think people might not think too kindly of us yeah. casting an African-American to play um, an orangutan. Yeah. And they were like, well, what do we do? He's like, well, I know someone who sounds just like him, and he's also named Louie. <laughs> Louie Prima or Prima? I don't know. Mm. Who was, I guess, also like a, a jazz musician. Um You wouldn't know it from listening to him, uh, but they could definitely skate by on that whole, like, race thing they'll be like no he's a white guy (laughs) (laughs) you think i walt disney would play pay a black guy to be on my movies no sir no sir 
So right. You know it, who you know who's a big fan of me? Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> Hitler. Look it up. Well, I mean, like Hitler. Hitler fucking loves Hitler's me. Hitler's also a big fan of King Kong. And King Kong's still in movies. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know. Look, I'm not, I don't know, I don't know shit about Walt Disney other than the fact that uh, his head is frozen uh-huh, under uh-huh. Disneyland uh, waiting to be thawed out uh, once Hitler's is also thought That's a good Fallout 4 mission. Is that a Fallout 4 mission? Mm-hmm. There's, you go to um, the Dol- founder Dol- of- Dol- Wisney's. <laughs> <What? laughs> the founder, because Nuka World is basically set up like Disney uh, World. right, okay. So that, you go to the founder see. of right. Nuka Cola down at the bottom, right. he's the head. Yeah, yeah, I remember you telling me about that. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, I'm curious if that never happened, like if that like urban legend never came about, about like Walt Disney's head, like how that would have changed Futurama. From, yeah. yeah, I was just about to say <laughs> that. Because, <Yep. laughs> I mean, that is clearly what all the heads of jars are based on, right? Yep. I mean, like... That, how how fucking crazy is it that Walt Disney was such a big deal that like not only is he still influencing our media like directly based on like the company he made, mm-hmm. but like basing our media just on myths and shit that was made <laughs> up about him. Like he died during the production of the Jungle Book, which came out in like 1968. So it's like oh. dude's been dead for like wow. a long time, like 50, like 30 years, eight, like 30 <laughs> years, right? Oh yeah, like yeah, totally yeah, like, like 30, 30 years. years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, yeah, that's a long time. It's a long time, bud. It's a long time to still be, uh, you know, relevant on podcasts like this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and he twisted and warped myths, so it's only fair that he gets war- uh, the thing, same thing done to him. It's we, perfect. We should start a podcast where we um, take um, things that are in the public domain mm-hmm. and just uh, put our own spin on them so that we can own them. Because that's yeah, essentially what they did with Jungle Book. <laughs> because it's like, <laughs> yeah, man, we're going to take that. We're going to take that Kipling book, and we are going to make it fucking different so that from here on out, like... Well, this is our jungle bug. All right. So all our, our saints go marching in rap that we'll develop and then take. <laughs> Right. Exactly. But man, like I, I found out that I didn't know this because I've never read the jungle book. I've never read the book. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, there was like, apparently, uh, so I started reading it a little bit last night because I was like, well, time to read it all before we record. <laughs> and I made it through a chapter and I was like, that was pretty good. I'd probably read this with Henry with heavy editing, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Cause it's like, I don't know if I want to say this word to my son when he's about to go to bed. Cause, uh, it's kind of old timey. We'll put it that way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cause I think Kipling, didn't he write like the white man's burden or whatever? Like that's him. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So there's definitely things in there where it's like, man, I'm going to have to like, edit this a little bit if I read any of it to Henry. So it's like, seems like too much work. We'll just read something modern. It's fine. (laughs) Bagheera, whose fur was as black as the heart of a gringo. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, there is like, so like, yeah, the book is is much darker than the movie. And like, so Walt Disney, like on the tail end of the sword in the stone was like, fuck! God, we're getting fucked, man! (laughs) No one liked this movie. It didn't make us any money. And like they were already in development of the Jungle Book. And he's like, fuck this shit. Do a different movie. Make it, make it fucking friendly and happy. And they're like, no. And they're like, fucking do it. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, so they rewrote the script. Like, uh, there's apparently there's a hunter in uh, the Jungle Book. And, Dis- and Walt's like, fucking no. Fucking no. Too dark, too real. Get it out. And, like, Ka apparently was, like, not necessarily a villain in the book, but he's like, fucking people hate snakes. He's a villain. <laughs> and they're like, okay, all right, all right, all right, fine, fine, fine. We'll do it. We'll do it. We're leaning into all their ha- their hatred and their need for escapism. That's all we do now. <laughs> he's like, look, man, I'm going to die during this production. I need this to be a success, okay? He didn't actually say I don't know. He might have said that. I don't know. Probably. I wasn't there. Probably. Probably. We could assume. Or we don't know. Allegedly. Allegedly, Allegedly. He said that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's why I guess the like he was like according to one of the like animators, uh, he handed the animator the Jungle Book, Kipling's Jungle Book, and said, "The first thing I want you to do is never read this book." <laughs> <laughs> Somebody handed to you. What are you gonna do? Where the rest of your life hinges on this one right now? What are you gonna do with that? And then they did have. A I'm go- about to die, and I'm mad with power. 
<laughs> Imagine what my company's gonna be like in 50 years. <laughs> they rewrote all the songs except for one. Uh, the Bare Necessities was like one of the original songs oh, that they okay. like pleaded with Walt. They were like, dude, we gotta leave this song in. Get rid of all the other songs, but we gotta leave the Bare Necessities in. It's, the, it's one of the best songs in the... It fucking won yeah. awards, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, so it's like, yeah, good call on that. But everything else was rewritten by like uh, the Sherman Brothers, who did like, I guess, like the Mary Poppins stuff and like, okay. and, like all that. Um, which, I mean, you know, the rest of the songs in the movie are like, they're good, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, like, The Bare Necessities is, like, the song, the song. of The Jungle Book. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah, The Jungle Book. The Jungle Book. I liked it. The movie. <laughs> the movie. Yeah. I liked the animated movie when I was a kid. I liked yeah. the live-action remake I watched a few years ago. Yeah, I like that one too. It, it, and it didn't get it was weird cuz it that is very much like a like a remake. Apparently, dude, like in like I I don't even know if this is on Disney Plus or anything, but like apparently like around the time the the SNES game came out, they did a live action Jungle Book. Like I think it was like 1993, which blows my mind because it's like that was uh, that had to have been home video. Like had to have been, yeah, right? Yeah, you're right. With real panthers and real tigers, Joe Exotic's animals fed, fed <laughs> peanut butter. Uh, which, like, apparently that that hunter character from the book, they put in that, that live action movie. So it's like, supposedly that one is like much closer to the source material than the animated film. Yeah. So that kind of makes me interested in it. Like, is Ricky Ticky Tavi like in the Disney canon? Like, does I don't know? Mm. Does Ricky Ticky Tavi make an appearance in mm. in? In the Jungle Book? I don't know. That know. fucking Al from Cinderella does, though. In the or, game, at least. Or, dude, <laughs> okay, so here's the other thing. I don't know who that owl is from, because it's like, in the it's, game... It's a jungle owl. It's, but, you know. <laughs> but it's like, is it the owl from Bambi? Is it the owl from Cinderella? They're the same. <laughs> I mean, yeah. and it's like, the Jungle Book's another one of those where it's like... Is it the owl from the Odyssey? We no, don't know. It's definitely not the owl. <laughs> honestly, is it painted really well? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not C three PO the owl. <laughs> uh, there's it's like the owl Athena. <laughs> <laughs> there's um like you've seen the video right of like the side by side footage of like reused animation in Disney films. Oh, of like Winnie the Pooh and the Jungle Book. Yeah. Or like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Jungle Book apparently has like a bunch of them. And um, the Jungle Book, like, and when they were making the Jungle Book, they were just starting to use like um, Xeroxing technology to like make some cells. So, like, the very end of that, of the movie, spoilers, when, uh, when Mowgli goes to the, the, the village, mm-hmm. a lot of that was just done with like, um, like, like Xerox. So it's like, mm. it's pretty wild because it's like up till then it was all like hand drawn. Every cell yeah. drawn, yeah. traced, and yeah. So I don't know how that technology works. It sounds really interesting because yeah. like all of that animation stuff is like really interesting to me, but it was also one of those where it's like, I'm not going to go that deep yeah. for the Jungle Book <laughs> SNES episode of Tad. If you would have loved it because the video game, different story. The video game <laughs> is uh, definitely a different story. But before we delve into this, yeah. I got this package sitting right here. Yeah, yeah. Let's, you want to see what this is? I'm not sure who it's from. I'm assuming maybe it's the G's. I didn't see uh, a from, but it's one single package of. It's from our good friends at Amazon shipping. It, it is soup. Soup. Or a, sauce. Some mulligatani. <laughs> Alicina brand. U- Uchukuta. Crema was de that, Rocoto. Was that Hut and Ease? Uh, yep. <laughs> Red hot chili sauce, but it's, it looks like it's a soup. All right. All right. I could go for a a, 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 chili, a chili soup. All right. So we're going to do be different. We'll do this on the, uh, the upcoming Patreon video. Oh, yeah. All right. I like it. Thank you. Whoever sent that. Yeah. Thank probably you. Probably the G's. Thank you for the soup. Probably Maybe the not. G's. Or I guess it uh I guess it could be Fernando. Fernando could also send this. Could have been Nando. Yeah. Hope you don't break your tooth on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> your soup crack all my teeth. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I told you this or not, but in Discord, he's like, Yeah, I don't eat those candies. I don't <laughs> they're too hard. 
Uh, I'm gonna send them to you with no warning, no warning at all. I think his wife does eat the the candies though. But she's very. <laughs> she's also a monster. She's very strong teeth. She's a robot. Yeah, she is. She is. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the Jungle Book. The Jungle Book. So they weren't just cold. They're just really fucking hard. They're really hard. Yeah, they're really hard. The Jungle Book, 1994. Um, Mowgli was played by none other than Jason Scott Lee. Who's that? I believe that is Luke Hang. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm not positive. Uh, no, it's not. It's fucking... <laughs> no, it's not. Here, Jason Scott Lee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, there's a character... Um, okay, so like, okay, 1993... Bruce Lee, Brennan Lee, Jason Scott Lee. <laughs> Perfect. Well, he 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 died during the making of, this movie. <laughs> of the Jungle Book. <laughs> Someone threw a real tiger at him. <laughs> <laughs> he did play. He did play uh, Bruce Lee, no relation, in the nineteen ninety three <laughs> martial arts film Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. All right. So there we go. Uh, he was also in. Let's see. Born in East L.A., Back to the Future Part Two. He played Whitey. I don't yeah, know. I don't remember that, that character. Uh, Probably somebody in Biff's gang. Uh, probably. Yeah. Uh, he was in the Ghoulies, Ghoulies 3, Ghoulies Go to College. <laughs> what are Ghoulies? Oh, man, do you, you don't remember the Ghoulies. No. I've never seen any of the movies, but I think the first the first movie when I, I remember like going to Blockbuster and like I was into horror, so mm-hmm. I'd like definitely walk that aisle and i remember the art for the ghoulies being i like, would get yelled at my mom and dad so, really yeah well, I, my my parents wouldn't let me rent them but they'd at least let me walk by them and <laughs> i like i remember the ghoulies i think is the one that has like the toilet seat and it's got like the tiny monster like coming out of the toilet seat i think you would know it if you saw it mm, okay. and it was always that like that poster or that that movie art is like forever just ingrained in my mind because I remember being like, God, I bet that movie's so good. <laughs> it's got a toilet on the front. On the front. On the front, Tyler. On the front. That's brave. And That's there, brave to do that in Hollywood. Yeah. And there's a monster coming out of it that kind of looks like Chucky, but if he was a zombie. So mm. yeah, this has got to be a really good one. It's probably like a turd Chucky, and that's what I'm here and for. That's 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 my thing. <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> Uh, he was also in Map Ch- of Churds. Churds. <laughs> <laughs> Just like mom used to make. Um, he was also in, I don't know, even know why the fuck I'm reading all this. <laughs> We're not even talking about this version of the movie. We're not even talking about the movie. Uh, he was in Map of the Human Heart, mm. Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. Mm, okay. Uh, Picture Bride, The Jungle Book. Murder in Mind, Tale of the Mummy, Soldier. Have you heard of any of these? Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've heard of this one. What's it doing now? Uh, the last thing he worked on was uh, Mulan. Okay. All yeah, right. Mulan. He st- Disney was like, hey, remember? You worked with us like a long time ago. Come on back. Yeah. I don't know why I thought he was Liu Kang, <laughs> but I definitely thought he was Liu Kang. You're our guy for stuff we're going to release in people's homes. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, The Jungle Book, 1994. Think about it. Check it out. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Let us know. Yeah. Yeah. Report back. <laughs> uh, it's. I've never heard of it, so it's probably bad, is my guess. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. It still took him like 20 more years to try it again. 93... 2003, 2013. Yeah, okay, probably about that. All right, reviews. I had to the- think, what's 20 years again? <laughs> Is that why old old people are the way they are? Oh, you we, mean are us? we locked in at a certain <laughs> age? Yeah, and of then course. everything revolves around like yeah. that home base of memories. Yeah, you have, dude, everything revolves, which is for, the nineties for us. Well, I think for us, honestly, I think time stopped at like 2008. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, that, I'm not trying to be harsh on us, but like, no, it's true. I didn't. Did I graduate from culinary school eight years ago? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or no? I mean, there was more one than that. Chris, I mean, twelve, Chris, thirteen, thirteen years ago. <laughs> Chris Black of Carnov fame like made that point very evident to me one day when he's like, "When's the last time you bought clothes that are different than the clothes you're wearing?" Uh, I guess like 2008. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, and that started get, that like made me think. I was like, 
what do people wear now? You know what I like? What's I don't know because I don't know any college kids. I don't know any. I don't know any kids. So it's like uh, we just dress Henry like a Skin, child. Skinny jeans? What are these? Uh? I, I grew up with only the fattest of jeans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true. I guess at least if I have to dress business casual, that's still pretty uniform across the board. I just wear jeans, <laughs> but even that is like. It just dawned on me like a few years ago. I was like, oh, yeah, there are different kinds of jeans. <laughs> it's not just like, you know, jeans. Like it used to be when I was like, didn't know about any of this shit. I remember being a kid and being like, jeans are jeans. Well, Melissa and I watched a TikTok where a woman like, she she, she showed herself. She's like, all right, I'm going to go in and now in 2021 into this Target, I'm going to buy an outfit. Every single bit of it will be in Target which is a fashion-forward place. I'm not going to buy this right now. She walks in, and then it shows her in what looks exactly like an outfit from 1983, like to a <laughs> fucking T. Because Melissa just showed me that part. I was like, where'd she get all those old clothes? What's Is that the point? Like, no, no, no. It's all from Target now. Wow. Like, that is... Dude, let's go and, to Target. And like Brandy <laughs> Jr., she she wears the crop tops with these super high-waisted jeans like yeah. you would see in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah, I saw someone at the gas station essentially wearing like those jeans, mm-hmm. and it was like, all right. Yeah, the sweats okay. with um, sweatpants that are bunched at the bottom. Yeah. You know, have elastics, so they fit to your, like, just, okay. Yeah. Sure. It's all cyclical, right? Yep. I guess. Because, like, it, it, I, it 100% fucking is. I remember being in high school and, like, fucking 70s shit being in. Do you, I don't know if you remember that or not. Oh, bell bottoms. Bell bottoms. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it was just like, okay, we're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> I never did it because it's like, look, I, I only know Whoever jeans. Whoever lives in that room <laughs> that just decides what we all wear again. So, <laughs> right. It's, yeah, it's, all right. It's like the manatees with the beach balls. Yeah. <laughs> What's in this year? You're 100% right, man. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who controls all that, all that big fashion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, because there's such a divide too. I mean, you like see like I don't know someone performing, and it's like people don't dress like that. You know what I mean? Like there's a divide between like mm-hmm. that and here, yep. and it's like what happens between that and here? <laughs> yeah, fantasy and reality. Where's where's the dividing line? Where do you cross over? I think the dividing between line between the hung, the center uh, district of the Hunger Games to right? the outer district, <laughs> right? Yeah, I think I think it's really just Target HQ. I think it's just someone there, like fuck it, man. I like the eighties. Push the green button, <laughs> <laughs> Mister Isaac Mizrahi. What do we do? The eighties, <laughs> right? Order, order, order. There's <laughs> just a button. They've got one of those drinking bird toys that just keeps pressing order. <laughs> How the hell do we get there? I don't know. <laughs> the Jungle Book. Did I'm you, glad we did, though. Did you know that there is a show called Jungle Cubs? Nope. Yeah, it is. Um, you know how everything got a baby's version? Mm-hmm. Muppets, of course. I don't know mm-hmm. if they started that trend, but in my heart they did. Yeah, there's like a Muppet Babies for the Jungle <laughs> Book where it's like Bagheera and Shere Khan and Ka, and they're all babies. It's all like pre the Jungle Book. <laughs> Perfect. I haven't seen an episode, but I'm definitely going to see So, subject. Baby Tailspin is right around oh, the corner. Dude, I would fucking be all over Baby Tailspin. <laughs> dude, is there canon for what the fuck happened between the Jungle Book and Tailspin? Like, is there like. Um, uh, Planet of the Apes? Right? Where uh, one of the canisters gets rolled into the jungle. <laughs> So <laughs> is that how Planet of that's the how Apes works? Work? That's how it works. That's how the oh, turtles yeah, yeah. work. That's how no, that's they develop the the serum that makes apes more intelligent. Yeah, so they, okay, right. And they develop it into a gas, and then one big thing I remember in the first one was all the apes then that have been a- awakened essentially, then grab canisters of the gas and just right. roll it down the pit right, where all right. the apes and are. And by the first one you mean not the first one. Right. Chronologically the first right. one. The one with the talking the the talking chimpanzee with yes. Caesar. Yes, what was that Caesar. one called? War of the Planet? Well, I don't know. I don't, remember uh, I don't know. There's so many. There's so many the old ones begin. and so many new ones. Yeah. Are you a fan of the that series? Uh the old ones, not really. Yeah. The new ones I did like. I saw all of them in you theaters. Saw all of them? Brady wow. Jr. was all about it, so I took her to see yeah. them. Like, well, that makes it that makes yeah. a big difference, I think. I heard they were really good. Yeah. I saw the first one and I was like, man, that was cool. All right. And then they were like, the second one's coming out. I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm gonna definitely 
happy that people third are third one's got Woody enjoy Harrelson. That. <laughs> oh really? And he's an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't imagine. Yeah. What about the uh, Tim Burton joint? Didn't Tim Burton do that one with like Tim Roth and all that, like in the nineties, where they wore like the fucking uh, ape suits and shit like that? Oh, I think you're right. I think it was Tim Burton. Maybe it wasn't. I don't. I remember. mean, I vaguely know. Yeah, yeah. Because there was. Yeah, yeah. There was a remake. Yeah, another remake. You're right, man. I totally forgot about that one. Yeah, they should let him do the Jungle Book. Yep. I want the Jungle Book to get morbid. I want Walt Disney to spin <laughs> around headless in his grave. <laughs> <laughs> Just for his, for his floating head to spin around in circles. Yes, please. Thus the ritual, the summoning ritual can be completed. Uh, but uh, the game. The game. The book, the game. You hear that, Dave? I do hear that. Uh, it sounds like uh, little tiny Bagheera and little tiny Shere Khan. They don't have differences yet. So they're just playing and they're just rolling around. They're being real cute, not knowing. Oh, I'm going to tell you, there's a there's a a baby's version show that Jack likes where all the classic monsters are babies. Oh, in like, a, in a like the Universal monsters, yeah. like the Wolf Man and Wolf Baby, and <laughs> yep. So there's like a Wolf Wolf Baby, Vampire Baby, Zombie Baby, Witch Baby, Mummy Baby, Witch Baby. Yep. I feel like they're just. Attack that is there a universal witch? There's like the Bride of Frankenstein. I feel like there right? was maybe the witch was well. The zo- like the zombie has like magical powers. <laughs> I guess they don't want the baby eating brains and shit. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. know. <laughs> I guess that kind of makes sense. I guess it's more of uh, the but, zombie is more of a Day of the Dead type zombie, like um, with the the Mexican like very artistic rendering of like. Oh, okay. I got you. The, yeah. the Day of the Dead. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were referencing like a movie, Day of the Dead. Uh, yeah, Cesar Romero. Yeah, <laughs> baby, baby Cesar Romero. <laughs> baby Bud, the zombie who could shoot a gun. Yeah, Cesar Romero is is the Joker. You're right. Who am I thinking of? <laughs> You're George thinking, Romero. George Romero. Yeah. You're thinking of the town Romero from Breath of Fire. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I am. Uh, didn't didn't at one point Cesar Romero play Liu Kang? I think that happened at some with point, his beard. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, they CG'd it out. It worked just fine. Of course I hear that. The pitter-patter of a tiny a, a tiny zombie baby disemboweling and eating uh, uh, Bagheera bits, uh, which, of course, ushers in a segment uh, that we like to call Dave Reads from Wikipedia. Okay, guys. Disney's The Jungle Book is a series of platform video games based on the 1967, damn it, I was so close, 1967 Disney animated film of the same name. The game was released by Virgin Interactive Entertainment in 1994 for the Game Boy, NES, Master System, Sega Genesis Mega Drive, Sega Game Gear, Super NES, and PC, and a remake for the Game Boy Advance was released in 2003 to celebrate the film's sequel, The Jungle Book 2. Mm-hmm. I want to know what mm. this plot is of The Jungle Book 2. Have you ever seen The Jungle Book 2? No. I just, I just want to know. I have no idea. I just want to know. The Jungle Book 2. Mowgli's son wants to go in there and be raised by, by Bagheera and take fire to the elephants and shit. Probably. Maybe. Oh my. I know that's the plot of Little Mermaid too. Was her daughter wants to be a mermaid, so she wants to go back. And she's like, "Girl, you got legs. You know how hard I work for these. <laughs> you know how cool it'd be to live under the sea." Yeah, I do. <laughs> I mean, it, it was sucks. it was okay at best. <laughs> if I wasn't royalty, it would have been really, really, <laughs> really bad. bad. <laughs> it's fucking cold down there, and I man. still got escape. I still left because I was a fucking princess. Yeah, dude, sex sucks down there. It sucks yeah. real bad. Yeah. And I just, then I got a giner, Eric, and I fuck all the time. It's wonderful. Yeah, You're going to lose no, it. It's fantastic. You want to lose your giner? <laughs> You're going to have to spurt eggs yeah, everywhere for yeah. somebody to come jerk off on? And, and it could be anyone, too. A turtle could come by and do it. <laughs> yeah. Think about that. What was the little? What was Ariel's daughter's name? <laughs> Ariel know. Jr.? Helvetica. Helvetica. Nice. <laughs> Ariel Light. <laughs> uh, the, the plot to Jungle Book 2, check this out. The film is a sequel to Walt Disney's 1967 film, The Jungle Book, and stars Haley Joel Osment as, yes. the, vo- as the voice of Mowgli and John Goodman himself. Yeah. 
<laughs> Rex himself yeah. as the voice of Baloo. Perfect. Um, the film received negative reviews. <laughs> <laughs> uh, however, it was a box office success. Box office success. Oh, so it did actually come out. I okay. guess this totally came out. Um, the film is not based on the second Jungle Book. However, they do have several characters in common. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is the fourth animated Disney sequel to have a theatrical release rather than going direct to video after the rescue Rescuers Down Under in 1990. Hmm. Wow. 2003, The Jungle Book 2. I was too old to give a shit yeah. at that time. <laughs> yep, yep. Wow. Uh, the plot is very long, so I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> uh, but it looks like Mowgli escapes the man village. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Hopefully for some heinous, unbelievable crime that he has to go live in the jungle again. We can only hope. <laughs> I, I hope it ends up being like a Lion King crossover. Okay, yeah. I want to see I want to see Timon and Puma partying with Baloo is what I want. It's pretty good. That's what I want. Yeah. It could happen. It could happen. They should have been in Tailspin is what they, what should have happened. Yeah, yeah, Tailspin. How do we know they weren't in Tailspin at some point? They could have been. They could have been. They literally could have been. There is a, a Tailspin video game that we get to talk about. Yeah. I think it came out on the Super Nintendo. Because I know the NES had one. I know I the NES it, had one. SNES God, had I hope one. the SNES had It was bad, I hear. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so, I mean, we can find out. Yeah, let's see. Because Disney, like, man, through the through the 90s, Disney made some fucking pretty solid video games. With Darkwing Duck, Rescue Rangers. Well, that was when Aladdin. Captain um, was handling all that shit. Uh, yeah, okay, that's fair. Mickey Castle of Illusion. I don't think we have Tailspin mm. on the Super Nintendo. We do have Tasmania, which is not a Disney property, <laughs> but it is, does start with a T. <laughs> 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 and he does spin. Perfect. And has a tiny tail. And I can go catch up <laughs> with that cartoon again that I loved back in the day. I didn't like I it. I can love, mm. oh my God, I love that cartoon. I didn't like it. I, but I think I would have liked it if I was your age when, you yeah. know, yeah. I think I just barely aged out of Tasmania. Well, back then, like, yeah, three years makes a difference. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so uh, this yeah. game. The, oh, right. I didn't yeah. finish the Wikipedia <laughs> segment. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, so the video game, not to be confused with the Jungle Book 2, uh, came out on a fucking shitload of consoles. Uh, while, while gameplay is the same on all versions, technological differences between the systems force changes, in some case drastic. In level design, resulting in six fairly different versions of the same game. Um, and then this article, this Wikipedia article, is essentially uh, based on the Genesis version. So it's, uh, yeah, side-scrolling platformer. Yep, it's, it's a platformer. It is um, probably one of the weakest Disney platformer entries until the, up until this point. Well, I want to talk to you about really what I want to do is, is, is draw some comparisons, especially from you, because I know how you feel about The Lion King. Mm -hmm. I want to draw some comparisons between The Lion King and The Jungle Book. Because mm -hmm. I kind of feel like, honestly, I kind of feel like they're very similar. Like, yeah. there's a lot of swinging in both of the games. In the Jungle Book, you're swinging on vines. Mm -hmm. um, but I will in the jungle, giant sprawling levels, you can get mixed up pretty easily, especially yeah. when you're adult Simba. Yeah, is and there's that there's that whole level in the Jungle Book where you're climbing that waterfall, and yeah. that is a level in the Jungle Book mm -hmm. as well. Mm, the log. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, and honestly, because, like, I didn't think that this game was a bad game. I mean, I've definitely played worse Super Nintendo games, like, for sure. I think there are worse Super Nintendo games. But, for me, all positives for this game are completely washed out. And for me, this game goes to the bottom of the barrel because it has a Sparkster problem. Uh, and you ran into that problem. Yeah, it does have a Sparkster problem. And it's... that absolutely, 100%, I think, makes it a fucking abomination, and it gets fucking thrown out to the to the fucking astral, astral plane, because to me, that makes it an anxiety. 
It ruins it. It absolutely ru- it banishes all good things that it has to offer because of how poorly programmed it is. So for you, Do you want to talk about the Sparkster problem in the, this okay, game? Yeah, because like first of all, the Sparkster problem is the, the, you that we ran into yeah. when we were covering Sparksters that there's a game breaking glitch in the yep. game that uh, halts you from progressing. Yep. So and, yeah, in Sparkster, uh, I noticed it prevalent on the drum levels because you don't have. I guess it's programmed where if you fall for more than a certain number of frames, you kick into a falling animation, and that falling animation must stop if you hit solid ground. But there is a level to which it's it's a it's all instruments. There's no solid ground. So if you did you know that instruments are gaseous? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know that from Sparkster. <laughs> <laughs> I think you knew that from being in band. Well, no, they don't tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> so on that drum level, like if you fall, if you bounce up high enough on the drum and trigger the animation falling down, you stay stuck in that animation and you have to reset the game. Right. So for me, that was, I don't care about I remember. any level of fun very to upset. this game. Yeah. That poor, shitty fucking programming ruins it for me. Fucking off the list. Irredeemable. In the in the jungle book, I ran into an issue where in the second level, yep, um, there are throughout this whole level there are swinging vines, pitfall style. Throughout like, the whole game, there are tons of swinging. Vines. That that is true. Yeah. That that's a that's a heavy theme uh, in the game. Um, but a lot of times you need to use these, you utilize these vines to swing from like one platform to another, and uh, there is one vine that did not spawn for me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, I was streaming. You can go back and watch the vibe. I was going to ask you, like, did you did you download did you t- download this an emulator and you download a pirated copy that's protected so you can't progress? Right. No, no, no. Original fucking hardware. Original <laughs> hardware. Original cartridge. Yep. And I was like, this and this. What's fucked up is this is why I stream. This is why I want to play games that we talk about on original hardware Mm -hmm. is because honestly dude if this had happened to me in an emulator i would have been like fucking emulator emulation is garbage like honestly that's where i that's where my mindset would be exactly yeah i would have been the exact same way but because it was on original hardware on the real cartridge that Mm -hmm. i own i was like what the fuck yeah did i get like a bootleg cartridge or something and then fortunately twitch chat was like Probably this game is programmed poorly, and yep. it tried to load too many objects, and they treated the vine as an object, which sucks, because there's an object limit, and if it reaches that limit, it's not going to spawn extra stuff. So so the- at any time, in any level, you could play the wrong way. And it not load the shit that you needed to load, and you have to restart. Presumably, presumably, we know for sure in one spot. Yep, but presumably, and I would like to argue. I'd like to come to the Jungle Book's defense for just a moment mm-hmm. and say that at least, at least this doesn't soft lock the game because, like in Sparkster, you're fucked. Oh yeah, you have to reset the game. Yeah, you can't move. You can't do anything. Yeah, you're stuck in that animation. But in the Jungle Book, you can die. Yeah, and then restart the level, and as long as you go through it slower, the the vine will spawn. Yeah, um, because it's it, as long as it's not trying to load a bunch of objects at the same time, it'll yeah. spawn. So, yeah, that, it's a problem. That, that is a better better than Sparkster. Yeah, but it's I, but it's, I agree with it's, you. It's still a problem. still a problem, and it I mean it kicks it down <laughs> to the bottom to the bottom now, of the list for me. And I kind of want to I, I I'm going to be honest with you. I kind of want to tread lightly on like. Rating a game based on its pro, I agree with you mm-hmm. in this scenario, but I mean, like Final Fantasy games are like not programmed. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, no, it's like right. I, I don't want to, but those games are really and modern good. games have I that like problem. Those. Sure, you know, absolutely. I they think do. I, I will give yeah. it higher Did points. Bethesda do the Jungle Book? I don't <laughs> yeah. understand. I do give it higher points because you're right. You can you can die and you can do something different. Right. Uh, and Sparks, you're just you're just shit. Alike. You're done. You have to reset. Yeah. And soft locking is like the worst case. Scenario and like, a and, game and there like is this. a level skip that you can get back to where you were. Like, yeah, at least that's there. Like in Final Fantasy, if something happens, well, you can always reset and you can always from your last save point. That's true, as long as you didn't save, yeah, afterwards, you yeah. know what I mean. So, I guess 
I think like in Final Fantasy, like they really make up for the the deficiencies in the programming. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't know. I don't know how often this happens in the Jungle Book. Maybe it was just really weird that it happened to me. You know, maybe it's not super common, but I, I don't know. Yeah, I agree with you. It it does it it definitely put a damper on the whole game because yeah you go through it and you're like you're worried am i lost or am i fucked right because yep. yes it, and that is a problem because the level design in the game is very non-linear which i mean could be touted as a good thing mm -hmm. but I, I honestly think that it's not a lot of fun to wander around the jungle and not you're not sure if you're going the right way or not yeah. um it's the it, the game is fun for me when you are platforming because I do honestly think that like a lot of the platforming is pretty good. I mean, I think it's it's fast. Like the game, like the platforming is it's the exact opposite of We're Back because like We're Back is so slow and the mm -hmm. sprites are large. Like the you know Rex's sprite is so big. And this I game, still think Mowgli's a little big. Yeah, a little. I mean, it's it's borderline, but I think he's a little too big. I don't know. I, I get just because I just the way. So you've got the moving background, the static background. Mowgli, Mowgli who I feel like is a little big, having to, and he's very slippery. And he's very floaty and like slippery I, boy. I found myself getting kind of uh, disoriented, like because he's so big, it's hard to see. Like he's, I mean, like I said, it's not like Rex by uh, any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. But I think he takes up just oh, enough God. of the just enough of the screen to where. Flipping around and moving, and you have to do some faith jumps. Yeah, you do for sure. And I think that's because of his size. I don't know. I think that's poor level design, mm -hmm. honestly. Because mm -hmm. I mean, like he's about as big as X in Mega Man X. I mean, is X much oh, smaller than okay. than Mowgli? I I get yeah. I mean that, is, that, that that's that's true, but I guess there's not as much. Vigorous speed up and There's down because Mowgli's so it's more Mowgli's very fast. I think yeah. it's a speed issue because okay, I, that's fair. Because I mean, like, yeah, I, that's fair. And I know, I know that like size and speed kind of go hand in hand. Sometimes you mm -hmm. know, the larger the sprite, typically the slower it's going to go, just so you can. The, so the it's game like is the playable. speed and the big, br the big sprawling levels in every direction. For sure, this is like that. Pro that probably makes it worse as well. I, I, the level design in this game is not good. It reminds me like, of Earthworm Jim, and it's I was like gonna say home improvement and home <laughs> improvement for sure. It's I mean because yeah, I almost went home improvement, but I don't think it's I it's don't think it's that bad. That bad. Yeah, because um, like there was, home improvement. The the levels are so huge, where it's just like God, man. Like I don't know. It just feels like I keep on going, and I don't know if I'm going in the right direction or not. Yeah. At least in the Jungle Book, the levels seem to be like reasonably sized for a platformer, and they like they seem to be like Earthworm Jim sized. But it's like Earthworm Jim had the Earthworm Jim. Like I recently replayed, and it's like I love that game, but it has bad level design in it. Like mm -hmm. it, 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 especially playing it for like if oh, I hated being heck trying to replay go through going through heck. I yeah, it was awful, and the. The underwater vacuum tubes, I think, in the second one. I see. I like that, but I like the I like the variety that it offers. But like, I guess like Heck is a really good and but but it's totally I get it. It's not good game design. The reason I like the the underwater level is because I know that I can do it. And when I streamed it like a few like a month back, I was like I didn't have an easy time with it. But it was like I know I can do this. I just have to remember mm -hmm. how I did it. I have to remember the path kind of deal. Um, which isn't good level design. I mean, it just, it, it isn't. Like, yeah. I mean, if you can't into it through some way where to go, then that's not good. That's not, that's not good level design. Yeah. That's just I mean, randomness, you know? And the Jungle Book suffers from that for sure. And it, al it also has some very weird, some of the platforms are just sort of weird. Because um, under the waterfall, you have to hit lizards and jump on their tongues. Right, yeah. And then in that forced, every level is pretty big and long. The forced scrolling level yeah, they is throw, by far the biggest and the worst. Yeah, they throw a forced scroll level at you. Because you're like two, it's, there, there are two or three different checkpoints in that level. It's so fucking big. Yeah. And it almost felt Cat Mario-esque in something like they're just being platforms and stones and shit that you... You just have to know it's there. Otherwise, you're just going to die. You just have to. And then you have to... The scroll is so slow 
that there are these falling platforms and you have to just jump slowly from every platform for the scroll to catch up right. for you to go all the way across. Right. I think that's shitty. Think like Super Mario World, like donut planes kind of deal. Yeah. Like, uh, But... The what's nice, they handle it well in Super Mario World because it's like they let you stand on there for just long enough, and then those blocks they flash, they flash, so you know they're gonna fall. In the Jungle Book, you don't get that. It's just, and also the ledges, those little platforms are like literally like two pixels high. Yep. So they're really hard to see. Everything on top of that, yes, they blend in with the background, and that's like. Not good on a platformer. You don't want your platforms to blend in with the background because then people don't know where they can stand. And that also, okay, that goes back to Earthworm Jim because I got those vibes from Earthworm Jim where it's like it felt like they were so concerned with making a good looking game that they sacrificed uh, recognizability in order to do it because they're like, Mm -hmm. because I'll be honest with you, dude, I think the Jungle Book looks really good. Like, I think it's a really, really good looking game. No argument from from me for the the look of it and the music. Yeah, I think the music's great too. I think the sound is really good. I think that like, but I mean, the game, I honestly think that the way the game looks and the way that it's animated is its strongest feature. Like, I swear, like when you're fighting Louie, like he's doing, like, it's like they took, it's like they took cells from the movie mm-hmm. and fucking traced them. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's like, it looks really, really good. Um, the problem is that it just, the gameplay is, it's not really there. Nope. I mean, <laughs> it's not really there, but it's also a game that I would totally finish. Yeah. I, it's kind of one of those for me. Cause I like, so you were very, very frustrated at the first few levels and it, and it, I was, fight. yeah, but toward where you got around oh, Louie, you got to enjoy it a lot, you know, enjoy it more. Well, yeah. Once we got past Ka, because like Ka is like the first Ka, the snake is like the first big boss in the game. And it's like, that's another thing the game fucks up on is like the pacing is not good because no. it's like you get to Ka and like everything up till then, unless you can't spawn a vine that is necessary to progress. It's not too bad. It's not too difficult. Nope. But then you get to Ka and it's like, dude, you got to throw so many fucking bananas at the snake, mm-hmm. which we haven't mentioned. That's your main attack. Oh, and it's, it is like, it's, it's like having the X buster. I mean, you throw that many shots at anything. Yeah. Especially Kaw. Like that was I I was I was blown away watching you fight Kaw. <laughs> I mean, it is like I don't I didn't I couldn't even Mowgli throws the bananas so fast, like Kunai, that it's yeah. like I just I couldn't count them. I was trying to well, count it's the It's like hits. X with the X Buster. It really is. It's that fast. Like and trying it, to count X Buster shots. I mean, I dude, I probably if I were to estimate sixty shots, sixty hits with bananas. Yeah, you're probably right. That's an estimate. I know, but that's what it feels like because it's like, and it's also not easy because it's like you have four hearts and every time you get hit by anything in the game, you lose a heart. You lose all your hearts, you die. That's just, Mm -hmm. that's just video games. Uh, So it's like you're, you're, I'm fighting Ka, you're Mowgli and it's like you can only get hit four times. Meanwhile, you got to hit him uh, 60, 70 times and it's like he's shooting these hypnotic, his hypnotic optic blast Mm -hmm. that is not already bad enough that it's taken one heart. It fucking homes on you. It, it chases you. If it didn't do that, I would say, okay, this this boss fight is a little, you know, if it went in a straight line like he has where he, if he comes in from the ceiling, right. it chases you. If he right. comes up from the floor, it's a straight line. Right. But if they were all straight lines, it wouldn't be so bad. Yep. But what I figured out I had to do, and this is like, I mean, this is like some next levels '90s shit because mm-hmm. it's like I feel like this is the the jank. Like this is like it felt like I was exploiting the game in order mm-hmm. to beat the boss because mm-hmm. it's like if I can get Ka to face the right side of the screen and shoot his optic blast off the right side of the screen, it disappears and I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. So the meta all of a sudden just became always stand on the right to go to debate the fucking uh homing rays and then jump out of the way and then they'll disappear. And he's so big with such a big hitbox and he spawns in three different places yeah. like if you go over into one safe zone a little bit too much, he'll immediately spawn on that side and hit you. And you, hit don't, you. you don't even you see, don't him, see spawn. him Yeah, yep. you don't even see him. Yeah, you get hit before before you see him. And then he starts, not only his head starts popping out of areas, then his tail starts popping out of areas. And it's yep. like, oh my God. And you have a very narrow valley in the, in the middle where I watched a 17-minute speedrun of this game. 
and like That's by vast. far the longest. Is that segments. the big section? Yeah, like him. The thing that things that took the longest on the speed run were call. The four scroll level. I mean, that's always yeah. Four I mean, scroll Louis level. Louis took a ton of hits, especially a second form, but he tore through Sheer Khan. Like he saved all his fruit until the very end. Oh wow! And then just unloaded everything onto Sheer Khan, and that made that the, the shortest boss fight in the game. I didn't get that far. I I didn't even get to Louis's second form. I, I knew that he had one because that four scroll level. That is that's stupid. Yeah, that is so like. <laughs> And then, because watch it, because I watched till t- you got there. And yeah. It is such a long, bullshit trap of a level. Like it is, it is absolute. And you can tell, like, there are these flashing statues that were. Right. Will... And the instruction manual says that these have random effects. See, to me, it looks like they would shoot fire and the program would remember. Oh shit, Louis can't have fire. Um, uh, <laughs> what? Those, you're talking about the mouths. Right. Yeah, the flame what? throwing Is it mouths. gas? Can it be gas? It looks like fire, but let's make it like a little bit of a different <laughs> right? color. I love that. <laughs> I love that. They're like play testing the game, and someone's like, Is it Louis wanting fire? <laughs> he has it. <laughs> oh shit. Shit. What can these pillars be spewing? Um, uh, really floaty sand? I mean, I, I thought it was fire. It looked like fire to me. And it never registered in my mind that it's like, the, Louis's after this shit, but he's got it. Yep. Oh, God. Well, the, in, in Shere Khan's level, you're running through like the burned down forest, jumping over like embers and stuff like that. Yeah. But you also start jumping on clouds, which is... Yeah, that doesn't seem to fit the it's Jungle dumb. Book at it's all. It's dumb. It's dumb that you're jumping on clouds in between the tree branches. Yeah. Yeah, that is dumb. <laughs> it so. could be dragonflies. That's what you jump on <laughs> earlier in the game. Yep. You know what I mean? And they fly you straight up. They're I the know. strongest fucking dragonflies you've Prehistoric. ever seen. Prehistoric. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of... Uh, there are a lot of... I mean, they had to add a bunch of stuff to you pad the game. To, yeah. There's definitely Toucan Sam in this uh-huh. game. Like 1,000%. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's just straight up Toucan Sam. Um, maybe this was a Toucan Sam game before it was a Jungle Book game. I don't know. Because <laughs> so. after, at the end of the fourth scroll level, you fight Louis' second form. Louis C.K. Louis C.K. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he drugs up in front of you. And every, time he, every time he goes to pull it out, yeah. you throw bananas at him until he stops. Dude, he could do three at a time <laughs> with his two hands and one foot. I mean, it's fucking gross. <laughs> Because like he does have a, he has like another a few different attacks. Otherwise, it's exactly the same as Form One. It yeah, I saw hits. he's got a ground pound, which yeah. like makes boulders fall from the sky, yeah. which is like, which you know that's honest, what he does before he dies. And that fight, like when I first got to Louie, I killed him on the second try, and after Ka, it was like what the well, you probably fuck? went through twenty thirty tries. On oh, Ka. dude, he's. I think I honestly, honestly, I think I probably spent an hour on Ka's level. Uh, just because cause super hard. And like, what also sucks is like, if, if a boss kills you and you, you lose your life, uh, you start back from a checkpoint. They've got the little, uh, elephant who waves the flag, Mm -hmm. who was played by Clint Howard in the jungle book. Uh, you've got him. He's your checkpoint. Uh, but the problem is if you lose all of your lives, you can continue, but if you continue, you're starting from the beginning of the level. And a boss fight isn't the level. You have to like get through the platforming level and then fight a boss. Mm-hmm. So I mean, and that's kind of standard like NES like that I mean, it feels a little old, I guess is what mm-hmm. I'm trying to say. It feels like something from a from uh, one generation ago kind of yeah. deal. One generation before the Super Nintendo. Uh, but I mean, yeah, it was really rough on that COD level because, yeah, I had to play that platforming segment over and over and over again because I kept dying and using yep. continues. Um, how do you feel about the continue system? Like, how do you feel about the gym system? I mean, it gives you a reason to explore the levels and kind of memorize stuff and know where stuff is and find yeah. the other power ups and find the other fruit. Like, I'm okay with it. It didn't bother me too much because yeah. it, it, it really. I'm like you. I don't like collectathons, right. but that didn't feel like a for. It wasn't a forced collectathon. Yeah. It was kind of and honestly, like if if I wasn't worrying about getting through the level, it was kind of fun to just try to find little caches of hidden shit because they were everywhere. Mm-hmm. And that reminded me of Earthworm Jim as well. Because that was one of my favorite things to do in that game. It was like there were tons of things hidden in those levels. You just kind of had to like 
look for them or you know see them in a strategy guide and kind of like know where they well, are. It's different when you're not made to do it. Like Banjo right. Kazooie, when you're made to find forty we're, fucking like, puzzle that's pieces, that's the object of it, right? Yeah, then it's then it's a chore, then it's a hassle. But yeah. if like if you're enjoying the game and you want to go off and find the extras, uh-huh. you don't have to. Right. But if you want to, then that's yeah. totally different than having to spend two hours finding puzzle pieces. Right, yeah. Because in the Jungle Book, the way that it works is if you collect enough gems in a level, when you complete that level, you can earn a continue, mm-hmm. essentially. And then there, you can also earn a bonus level, which I never got. <laughs> and I collected a bunch of gems, so yeah. I have no idea of like why I never got to play a bonus level. Mm. Maybe but, they don't exist, like the real ending in Smash TV. You just can't get yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. But yeah, I sure as hell didn't play any bonus levels. <laughs> uh, what, and then the two levels after the four scroll level, which are the start of Shere Khan's levels, are the shortest. Like, yeah. you just jump across like three or four trees, you're done. And then a long, a very long level where you're evading lightning and oh, jumping Final, on jumping on the clouds. Final Fantasy X flashbacks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Until you get to uh, Shere Khan, and then you just roll all your coconuts at him, yeah. and throw all your mangoes at him, and he's dead. Yeah, <laughs> we you know, we kind of I I failed to mention when I was talking about the bananas that there are other fruits. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I guess there's the the coconut that you, like you said you roll like a bowling ball, mm-hmm. which is generally useless, I guess, unless you're fighting Shere Khan. Which he was on a, he was on a straight flat plane. There you go, coming at you. So, uh, and then there are also the papayas, I guess, that you kind of throw like... Or mangoes. Grenades. And then there are also the mangoes, which I think are the homing ones, right? Okay. Um, so, yeah. There's different fruits. <laughs> I mean, Aladdin's got apples, so I guess Mowgli's got the rest of them. It's covered. true. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the fruits. It's all of them. I'm, honestly, this game would have been so much better if I could play as Bagheera, uh, because Bagheera's the best character mm-hmm. in the Jungle Book, period, the end. Uh, I love Bagheera. I used to. I think I told this story a long time ago, a long time ago on the show. Uh, I used to have dreams, like regularly occurring dreams, when I was probably about six or seven years old, uh, where Bagheera would come to my window, uh, come to my window, <laughs> and then uh, I would get, I would climb out the window, and I would get on his back, and then he'd take me to the jungle or the moon. Or to like where the dinosaurs are. <laughs> like, I mean, it was like, this was like, this was a pretty sweet, like, lucid you're the, dreaming. You're the kinda... dad I wish I had, Bagheera. <laughs> I know, child. No, no, just the brother I wish I had, really. Bagheera would make a pretty kick ass brother. <laughs> but a I wish... much older, lawful good brother. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Like, um, lawful stupid, essentially. Mm. It was like, Bagheera is like lawful to a fault. Yeah. But he had a counter Baloo. <laughs> you know? Yep. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, and then I remember in kindergarten, uh, we used to, and this might be why I had these Bagheera dreams. I don't know. Like, we used to, like, and I, I've tried to find this. I've tried to find it. And I cannot find it. I don't know if it was just straight up my kindergarten teacher uh, had a record of the Jungle Book, and maybe it just had like the songs on one side or something. But I remember every day in kindergarten, we would exercise essentially, where it's like we would stretch and like we would get the sillies out. Essentially, <laughs> is what they call it at Henry School. The Japanese emperor tells us we have to do our exercises now, <laughs> right. class. Come on, right? So we would do we would do those exercises, and like it would go. Um, it, it would rotate who got to pick what song was played. And it was a huge fucking deal. It was like the biggest fucking deal in kindergarten. Like <laughs> what song we played at the beginning of the day. Mm-hmm. And it's like, if it was your birthday, you got the, you got to skip line. You got to choose. And I remember like us all loving that you had, so much. You had a school birthday. See, I had a summer I did, birthday. Yeah. I had a summer or you had a summer birthday. Mm-hmm. I, I had an, a fall birthday. So I was all set. Um, I don't remember how they did it with the summer kids. wasn't my problem, so I never really paid attention. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was a big deal. And we got, I mean, there's some arguments. There's some, And I think I was thinking about it. I was like, she was probably doing that on purpose. Like that was a lesson where it's like, you can't always listen to the, you can't always listen to the King Louis song. Sometimes you got to listen to the, like there was one song that was like the, the elephant military or whatever. And mm. it's like, 
man, we used to fight the fuck over that shit. Like, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean it was like life or death kind of shit where it's like, man, I can't believe that motherfucker chose the fucking vulture song. <laughs> <laughs> He did that just to piss me off. Just to piss me off. And <laughs> you, Robbie. <laughs> Let's kill him. What, what other instances can you think of in like elementary school that had instances like that? Like the fight over kind of deal? Yeah, where like you had to pick on a certain day and kid, it was a big deal to you. Because I remember well, setting in the normal kind of um, benches in the cafeteria, yeah. but they also had booths. Oh, wow. They had like three booths. So you got to, on your birthday, you got to pick you. You got to pick three other friends, and you could sit in the booth, the booths for lunch. Um, so I remember mine was usually on. If I since I had a summer birthday, it was like a random day, like oh nobody's birthday, so I guess we'll do a summer birthday this right. you know now. So there's I never knew when it was coming. That sucks. Um, I remember my first grade teacher in her room. She kept a clawfoot bathtub full of throw pillows. Okay. So if you were really good or you won something, you got to spend like however much time you could get in the bathtub and read. All right, Tyler, you did really good today. Take off all your clothes and get, get in that tub. Get in the bathtub. <laughs> what kind of book do you want? Do you want the Ka- Kama Sutra? It's a picture book. Here you go, little boy. Kama Sutra. That's that feels kind of appropriate <laughs> for today's topic. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that was always. A big point of contention, those those two things. Yeah, I don't remember really anything. I don't re- like that that like what song we played in the morning was seriously like that was the that was mm-hmm. the thing. Yeah, I uh, remember playing in elementary school. The music teacher would come to the classroom in kindergarten and would play uh, "Froggy Went a Courtin." Yeah, would pick two different kids out, you know, of the of the the class and say like um Cyrus went a court and uh, you know and pick a girl and they'd all laugh or ooh or whatever. Right. Uh remember one time and I say Cyrus because it was it was his name was Cyrus and they picked him and then for the girl picked the girl no one wanted anything to do with. Like the girl that was like she was the the smelly kid in class, the gotcha. you know, the girl with the menacing aura, right? That's a good way of putting it. It wasn't like she was like just like down her luck. Like she was, I don't know what her story is, yeah. But she, let's get her on the show. She, she grew up into exactly what you'd think. Like I remember, let's definitely get her. on I Remember the show. my friend Dustin? His mom was like, she's gonna grow up into be like a beautiful, smart young woman. You wait and see. Sharon, you were wrong. She did not. <laughs> her Facebook is just. Spill the Pure tea. Pure cringe entertainment. Spill the tea. <laughs> oh, man. but uh, I'm going to friend her. You're going to tell me her name when we're <laughs> yeah, done. Yeah, you look her up. <laughs> but he, the music teacher picked her. And as soon as he started singing, oh, my God, Cyrus burst into tears oh, and no. started screaming. Like, no, not her. Oh, and the no. music teacher did not. He's like, Cyrus and Amber had lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I feel bad for. I mean, look, I don't look. I wasn't there, but I feel. bad. I don't want to do anything with her. I, I feel bad for Amber. I mean, that's pretty rough, man. <laughs> yeah. That's some shit that sticks with you, dude. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so it's not. I mean, I'm sure she probably had a hard childhood and then grew up into an equally whew, adult. So yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Because oh <laughs> Melissa and I will often like. Did you see what I ever posted today? <laughs> yeah, holy shit. Man, she really hates wearing a mask, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, yeah, we always, like, I remember in elementary school, I mean, we definitely had the kid who smelled like pee. Mm-hmm. We definitely had that kid. Um, which I mean, honestly, other than him smelling like pee, he was okay. And that kid shared my, that kid in my class in elementary school shared my last name. So it was always, uh, people would throw that kid at me if they were ever <laughs> mad at me. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is PP Holland. This is Poo Poo Holland. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Very nice kid. No idea what yeah. happened to him though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, the, the pee-pee kid at my school, I mean, he was, yeah, he was nice, other than, like, it kind of sucked to smell him, yep. <laughs> you know? I felt bad for, uh, in middle school, 
uh, a transfer student came in, like in seventh grade. I remember one kid started telling everybody that the other guy held me down. The new one? The new guy. Yeah, uh, an existing student told everybody the new kid okay. lived close to him. Okay. And that he would come to his house and hold him down and suck his dick. <laughs> it's like, yeah, he'll. I bet he's probably done to all, uh, people in my family and everything. Oh my God. He sucks. He sucks everybody's dick. I don't want it. Yeah. He sucks. He makes, he makes me do it. I mean, I'm laughing because I'm assuming <laughs> that this is a complete fucking bullshit story the the transfer student was like what the fuck <laughs> don't tell <laughs> what them. is going on <laughs> and i felt like i mean he was i mean i feel i felt bad for him and that he was transfer so... student was brandon of axel and, Bra- <laughs> <laughs> and the kid who told everybody he got his dick sucked was brandon of axel <laughs> no i remember oh, that I and mean, that God. kid was just i've never seen someone so abused in in middle school oh and like he, tormented by other kids you mean yeah, the transfer yeah, yeah, yeah. student the transfer yeah. student and i remember uh, it sucks being that transfer he, student yeah he got a he got a brief reprieve and i i thought like it was it was a cool thing like i i never had classes with the guy I didn't you know held him. him down and sucked his I, dick. So I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah you want to see how it feels then Chase, your old medicine <laughs> Mm, that's pretty good, actually. <laughs> how you like, how you like that? <laughs> That'll teach you. <laughs> you like them apples? <laughs> Is this good? <laughs> tell me when you're gonna do it. <laughs> you tell me, I'm so mad. I'm gonna tell everybody you didn't tell me. <laughs> I remember Daniel was the the guy's name. Like Daniel, um, ultimate slacker. Ultimate slacker. He was he was hilarious. The dude was absolutely hilarious. But he turned sixteen in eighth grade and quit school in eighth grade. Holy God, that's, that's way too that's that, way too early to turn so sixteen. When I say ultimate slacker, <laughs> yeah, like so he was just held back a, a bunch. A bunch when his when his younger, much younger sister passed him. That's when he quit school. <laughs> Can you imagine being 16 years old in eighth grade eighth and being grade. like, I don't want to fuck anybody here. And there was a big thing where he was like, can I drive to school? <laughs> like, like, it's never been an issue before. Daniel, can you drive to middle school? Wouldn't you be more comfortable, I don't know, literally anywhere else? <laughs> <laughs> and I remember everybody like, I mean, the kid never did anything, but just like be funny in class. Like, yeah. He never did homework, never did anything. Of course, he fails every single year. Sure. But... He took up for the the other kid. Oh, like, the, he's the like, transfer kid. Yeah, he had to sit next to him in like a music class. He's like, I don't need to shut the fuck up. He's actually a pretty cool guy. And like things lessened after that yeah, for him. After they're <laughs> like, that that person's a man and could kill me. <laughs> yeah, he's a he has a beard and a permit in eighth grade. <laughs> no one could hold him down and suck his dick. <laughs> no. <laughs> Man, I hope he doesn't. I hope he doesn't learn from that kid and suck all his dick. He can suck like four or five oh at once. <laughs> Man, uh, y'all's middle school experience was fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were worried about gangs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were too. That was that was the big thing in seventh grade. Like, <laughs> don't wear don't no don't wear blue to school. You can't wear blue to school anymore. Folk broke off from the Crips, and now they're forming their own thing. Don't wear blue, or you're going to get beat up or killed. Yeah, yeah. We worried about that. We worried about that, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but a bunch of middle, uh, middle-class white kids. Don't wear blue. Don't yeah. wear blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. The thing, because like, I was in Cedar Rapids in middle school, so the big thing was always the gangs coming from Chicago. <laughs> that makes no sense. It makes, they're, they're coming. It makes no sense. They're coming to Cedar Rapids. Like why? That was that was the the proto Fox News. The caravans coming from Mexico. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the gangs are coming. They're yeah. all in their trucks. They're coming yeah. from Chicago. Well, and see what it was was that like the the tough <laughs> kids either perpetuated. I mean, they definitely perpetuated. I don't know if they invented it, but they were like. Yeah, okay, we can latch onto this. We can we can absolutely roll the other kids with fear through <laughs> through the fear that even like all the kids have of gangs. 
Why were we so scared of gangs? I the, don't understand. The local news. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> I told this story a long time ago about my mom talking to me about gangs. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there was like a Dateline NBC special about sex. And my mom... And the, Tyler, it, don't you ever let someone hold you down and suck you <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if it's a you, blood or you, a grip <laughs> or even a Latin king. You don't let them do you it. You don't let them... <laughs> you play dead. And they'll suck for just like a little while and then they'll do Whatever you do, Tyler, you do not get hard. <laughs> you just like... <laughs> they can suck their dick and you're not going to hell unless you get hard. So you play yeah. dead, you don't it's get like hard. It's not a sin unless you get hard. <laughs> it's in the Bible. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's in Hebrews. <laughs> He took Luke into his mouth. <laughs> he took his Luke's member. But oh no horse-like emissions were admitted. <laughs> thus he is allowed to enter in the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> God damn. So yeah, she talked to you about the gangs after the oh, after the news. For, like, for months they're building up this news program about like take if you have teens, sit down and watch this with them. Oh, no. Watch this with them about sex. Yeah. Oh, it's very right, important okay. about yeah. sex. Um, and she kept telling me, like, how old were you at the time? Uh, it was in the it was in um, my last house, so I was probably I was probably a sophomore in high school. I bet. So you know what's up. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what's up. Okay. Yeah, plenty but, of people help me out and suck my dick at that right, point. Right, right. Yeah, this is like okay Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but mom built it up so much, like it was going to be. I don't know what she expected, like a big abstinence, SCD sort of talk. And oh, she hadn't seen the program. She hadn't seen it. Just like, like spots. They, they were just building gotcha. it up. Like spots were like, you have to watch this with the kids. This is going to you know, help them understand the importance of not having sex and blah, blah, blah. So she this whole time told me, we're watching this together. We have to, we're watching, like made a big deal about it. When it finally came on, we sat down and watched it. <laughs> and all, all it was, it was, it was, it was just a bunch of kids talking about Oral sex on the bus and in the bleachers, and that's the first time I'd heard about the bracelets. Oh man, see, it's just giving you ideas. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's all it was. <laughs> Halfway through, my mom was just like, "You can go to your room." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you don't want to sit there and watch the oral sex program with me? <laughs> Thanks, mom. Dad knows I'm fucking my girlfriend. By the way, he's not going to tell you though. <laughs> They do that <laughs> on the bus. Oh yeah, all the different bracelets to show how far they've gone with guys. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Man, it's fucked up that that's like as far back as that went. Yeah, because like didn't <laughs> that, I feel like I just heard about that like a few years ago? The colored bracelets, like, d mm -hmm. d like is that still a thing? It's like what? That's like that's the that's the huge that's the suburban white mom boogeyman. Man, is the 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 sex bracelets, <laughs> the color coded sex bracelets. Man. The yeah. herb, the urban myth of the of the suburban white mom. It's like I'm sorry, it's not fair, but it's like I don't have that fear, and it's not fair because I have a son, <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's just kind of like, just please don't get a girl pregnant. Why do you have this brown bracelet, Henry? <laughs> Why do you have it? Hell, that I couldn't suck a stick. What do you think? Oh, damn it! Right. Did he get hard? <laughs> <laughs> Did you get hard? No? Okay. Boys will be boys. Well, go ahead. You go. <laughs> I got some new shipping labels. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, like, yeah, for real. It's like, yeah, just don't get a girl pregnant. I don't, <laughs> like, I don't care what you do. Like, you fucking explore, my, my dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah, hopefully by that time they'll have male birth control that kids can just have. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. I doubt it. Get that switch in your balls, son. Keep that switch off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want him to start doing it now. But, you know, like, <laughs> around, like, high school and shit, mm -hmm. like, it's fine. Like, once you get your car, it's like, whatever. You're essentially an adult. <laughs> don't get a girl pregnant, please. <laughs> don't, Because yeah. that's when everyone gets pregnant, I feel like. It's like, like, I had friends in high school. I had a really good friend in high school. It's like, now he can drive. Now his girlfriend's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> now they can actually go somewhere. Right. Yeah. Can you come yet? No? Okay, let me know, let me know when you can. <laughs> Did you come? Yes? 
Don't do that in a girl. <laughs> that's all. That's it. <laughs> well, <laughs> the two out of three is okay. <laughs> <laughs> To the Jungle Book. <laughs> uh, speaking of our childhoods, oh. I have a question for you. Uh-huh. Uh, this isn't something that we've really ever done before, but uh, I was looking around for commercials and like print ads and stuff like that mm-hmm. for the Jungle Book. And I ran across on YouTube uh, a commercial for the Jungle Book. And uh, I was curious if you've ever seen it because this is like this is one of the things that I really like about this show. It's like when I start doing research, I find things that I've forgotten about that are super not important <laughs> at all, and of course yeah. I don't remember them. But when I see them or hear them, it's like, oh my god, I had to have seen this like twelve times a day for like a summer, <laughs> you know, or yeah. something like that, like watching fucking Ducktales or some shit. I'm curious if you remember this. If you want to get out of this place alive, you're going to need a compass, camouflage clothing, a two-week supply of food and water, and a high-powered radio, and some bug repellent. But you're not getting none of that. All you're getting is bananas and underwear. (laughs) And this is all gameplay. This is just guitars and gameplay for the Jungle Book. (laughs) You ever try to get to level 10 in your underwear, boy? Disney's the Jungle Book. There is a level 10. Genesis, Game Gear, Game Boy, NES, and Super NES Systems. That's, there we I, go. I do not remember that ad, but holy fuck, that is a bad ad. It's a really bad ad. You remember like when we were, I remember being a kid, and it's like, those were all our commercials. Nobody in the jungle! <laughs> it was just people... Throwing bananas! <laughs> it was just people screaming at us. <laughs> like, I couldn't imagine, like, if I were, like, we're chilling watching YouTube with Henry, I can't imagine a commercial like that <laughs> where just a grown man is screaming at us. <laughs> Boy! <laughs> Yeah, because he was dressed up like a like a drill sergeant kind of deal. Like none of this makes sense. <laughs> Yay, ninety! But it doesn't have to. It, I, 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 you know, it moved games, I guess, or yeah. it didn't. I don't know. <laughs> it looks badass. Yeah, my underwear is bananas. <laughs> man, the Jungle Book, man. Yeah, fuck, fuck yeah. Look, yeah. Welcome to the Jungle Book. They really were like pitching shit to. Like, they knew their audience wanted to have sex real bad. Mm -hmm, (laughs) And they're like, how do I do it? The Jungle Book, maybe? (laughs) (laughs) Throw throw bananas in an owl until it gives you you hearts. Hearts? (laughs) Yeah. So, the Jungle Book. Jump on baby birds. Man, I hate those baby birds. They shouldn't steal one heart. They're they're baby birds. They're the equivalent to piranha plants coming out of pipes. Yeah. No, I think this game, it had decent potential, but I, f- I feel that there's just, there's just too much wrong with it. I mean, I get why it's not on the list. Yep. Uh, I, I get why it's not on the list, too. I, d- I don't think, other than the game-breaking glitch for me, I don't think it's, I think it's worse than The Lion King, but not a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, I also think it's worse than The Lion King. Like the Lion King, I don't think should be on the top 100 list. I knew that, and that's why yeah. I wanted to ask, because, I mean, you've made that abundantly clear yeah. on the show before, That's and that's why I was curious how you felt like the Jungle Book compared. Yeah. You're right. It's 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 in the same vein. I think it's worse, but it's... So Aladdin is still the best Disney Super Nintendo game yeah. so far, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I feel good about that. Yeah. I mean, some of the Mickey Mouse games weren't that bad, but yeah, Aladdin, bad. Aladdin's But I mean, Aladdin's like kind of a standout for me, yeah. at least. Yeah. It had fun, fast-paced, fast-paced gameplay that wasn't too kitty. like, yeah. Good music. Yep. And I mean, the Jungle Book had pretty decent music, they too. Did, I yeah. mean, I got a copyright uh, strike. Well, not really a copyright strike, because I upload, I back up all the Twitch VODs to YouTube and mm-hmm. just mark them private, because it's like, I might want this for one day, like what for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when I uploaded the Jungle Book, they're like, no, there are three instances of the melody of the bare necessities used in this video. And it's like, damn. And they're like, it's cool. You just can't monetize it. And it's like, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> Man, all right, YouTube. You got me. <laughs> Fucking, I want my nickel. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> would, you like to, would you like to hear what Flopsy, a.k.a. the... 
Ultimate Nintendo Guide to the SNS Library 1991 through 1998 by Pat Contry, courtesy uh, of Monster Mold Mike. I would love that. Has to say about the Jungle Book, parentheses Disney's. <laughs> yes. Speaking of that, Brendan just texted me. Hey, ask him uh, if he's held anybody down, sucked their dick recently. <laughs> <laughs> what, what time is it? <laughs> uh, daylight savings time? Uh, they gave it three and a half stars. It's way Out too of five. High. That's way. <laughs> that's a 70. Wow, that's, that's way 70%. too high. No, too. <sighs> Outside of the game, game breaking glitch. I think this is a two to two and a half star game. The reviewers are Buddy KY. So I think mm-hmm. I think in general this book kind of skews to It does. It higher. skews positive. Yeah. Unless we really like the game, then it skews negative. Then it negative. skews negatively, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, but the Jungle Book is like, I'm curious what they gave Aladdin. Yeah. Let's okay. look, right? All right. So Aladdin, Disney's, four stars. So like the Jungle Book's a half star. A, a half star better than the best Disney game Okay, now opinion. what about The Lion King? What about Beauty and the Beast? <laughs> okay. Lion King, six stars. <laughs> right. It's five stars in a lion's head. Uh, the Lion King, four stars. It is not as good as Aladdin. So there we go. Well, according to <laughs> Flopsy, it is. <laughs> Fuck you, Fucky Flopsy. <laughs> Tyler? Yes, Dave. If you were to give this, if you were to give this game a beard, not Flopsy, if you mm-hmm. were to give this game a beard that sums up how you feel about it, what kind of beard would it be? Uh, I would have to give it the the frozen, back in time in a jar, small neat mustache of Walt Disney. Oh my God! Yeah. All right. Okay. The racist ish Hitler mustache of Walt Disney. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Tyler. Yes, Dave. If you were to give this game a pair of glasses, that sums up how you feel about it. What kind of glasses would you give it? I would give it the glasses of um, Dr. Seuss, one of his lesser works that you probably can't buy anymore. (laughs) That's what this game sort of is to me. (laughs) 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 Okay. It still drives me crazy, all the posts I see about. Oh, the Dr. Seuss stuff? Yeah. It's like his... What part of it drives you crazy? I don't see posts about it because I don't fucking <laughs> immerse myself in that world anymore. I mean, I, I have... The, pe- some people have surprised me posting about it. Uh, for the most part, like, when I see people that are spewing that shit, it's just like... Like spewing un- what shit? Unfollow. That, like- about all the, you know censorship and how we're destroying America, how it's not the right. same, how they don't understand this is just the worst, how, sure. how they grew up was just perfect and ask, nothing should change. Ask and, them if they've ever read any of those fucking no-name Dr. Seuss books in their fucking <laughs> life. Yep. Because it's like when I was reading, the, when I was like reading the articles about it and the titles are just like, nope, uh-uh, no, never heard of it. Nope, okay. Yep. I mean, fucking Cat in the Hat's not on there, Lorax ain't on there, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, Baby, I know the hits. And I saw outtakes <laughs> from like the racist parts of those books. It's like, yeah, yeah, okay. But it's not like, it's it's the estate. It's Dr. Seuss's kids being right. like, yeah, let's not, we right. don't, yeah, we think this has kind of hurt his brand. It's kind of time to move on yeah. from these. Like, no one is like, they're taking it away. Who the fuck is they? <laughs> the who is who, doing it? The people it's, who own it. <laughs> it's his estate. They're like, no, we don't want to sell these anymore. We don't, right. like, and really, like, I saw, I saw a a a TikTok that they broke it down really well in a way of like I think anybody right or left can understand because she uh, the the person mentioned, well, it's all capitalism, all of it, every bit of it. So if you think cancel culture is just like no, it's just people like they want to make the most money that they can. This thing might make me less money, so I'm gonna get rid of it so I can make more money. Well, and it's like, also and that's, that's that's all it is, and really. It, and it's also, dude, like probably the most press that Dr. Seuss has gotten in how long? And forever. You know what I'm I mean? sure his book sales are through the they, fucking roof. Yeah, I'm, now. of course they went up. Of course they went up yeah, because like people are thinking about Dr. Seuss now, and yep. it's like, oh, yeah. let's get one of the ones we can still buy. Well, we can still get them. <laughs> well, we can still take them away. Take away our guns and our and our one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. 
Hey, that's a classic. Yeah. <laughs> that's a classic. There's nothing racist in that, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> so One just, can't be too sure. Those it, books were written a long time ago. So yeah, somebody posted that surprised me, and I was just like, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. I was surprised that my dad felt about it the way that he did because yeah. my dad's generally like we we're we're typically aligned in our thoughts and stuff like that. But I mean, he but he's just like you know how like gangs were like the boogeyman of suburban white moms in the nineties. Mm. It's like cancel culture with him for whatever reason, and it's like, what are you worried about getting can Like, what are you worried about? You're- and, you, and you tried canceling everything back in your day that you didn't like that you thought was bad for your kids. Like, you just don't like them canceling the shit you like. It just turned around. Like, people always try to get rid of the shit that they like, but even in this case, it's still just big corporations saying like, well, if I cut this... I'll probably make more money right. because I make more money saying I don't. I'm, I'm against it. Sure, like sure. A, bi- a big soulless corporation or entity does not truly give a fuck. No, <laughs> no. Do they want to survive and and do they want to make, make profit? Money. Yes. yes. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. I mean, nine times out of ten, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, man. I mean, seriously. Like, when's the last time everyone was talking about Doctor mm-hmm. Seuss? Except the one time a year when it's Dr. Seuss week in elementary school. Right, yeah. And just like, fuck, where's some blue and white striped anything? <laughs> yeah, we keep everything. Tyler, we gotta go to Walmart. It's midnight. We gotta go to Walmart right now and buy anything Dr. Seuss. <laughs> really, honey, can't you? No, she had, it's a big deal. I mean, it is, it is a big deal. You don't want, you don't want your, you don't want so your it, kid to be the only kid. Not wearing no, the Dr. Seuss. Seuss stuff, every yeah. year, every year for the last few years, that that Choco Chica was in elementary school. It was just like it would sneak up on us, and it's just yeah. like, all right, let's go to let's go to Walmart <laughs> in the middle of the night and get some Dr. Seuss stuff for tomorrow. I have a memory of not me, but Nikki getting a black shirt the night before and cutting out like a white shirt for like a like a cat in the hat. Like she fucking made this shit <laughs> where she was like, <laughs> but to be honest, she wasn't like, I said it was the night before, but it was like, she was like, she couldn't find anything she wanted. So she's like, I'm just gonna make it. I'm like, okay, that sounds great. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna play video games. Are you cool with that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a one person job. Yeah, it's right? a one person job. I can't do that. My job is to come back later and be like, damn, Henry, you look good, man. You look fucking like cat in the hat, dude. Sweet. <laughs> Mom, I'll, I'll do that. Unless it looks bad, don't fuck it up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm holding a whiskey for whatever reason. <laughs> a cigar. <laughs> I'm reading six racist Dr. Seuss books at the same time. <laughs> yeah, good job, sweetie. All right. Daddy's got to get back to Valheim. <laughs> I guess that's it. I guess we yeah. got some things. I got... <laughs> Yeah, any more questions? I got some. Qu- I got some more questions for you. You want some more questions? Yeah, give me some more questions. Do you have any achievements for this game? Question number one, three. <laughs> um, DK Donkey Kong, and that is you. I heard he's the leader of leader the leader of the bunch. I mean, you know him well. <laughs> he uh, beat the game exclusively throwing bananas. Fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's my kind of challenge right there. Because you know me. I just roll with the bananas all day. <laughs> <laughs> you and Cockmaster Ashley Shake. Can't fuck it's, it's energy right there. <laughs> Do you have any other achievements? Um, no. Nah. I've got a couple. Um, a bunch came in from Twitch chat. Thank you, Twitch oh, yeah, chat, I very much. Fuck John did. Uh, here are my favorites. Poop shoot. In order to unlock poop shoot, uh, you make Mowgli's diaper blow up and work as a parachute. Uh, that came in from Dig Dougie, which if you do fall oh, yeah, from yeah, high yeah. enough, your uh, your red diaper uh, does turn into uh, a parachute to let you float safely down. <laughs> um, second achievement I've got is welcome to the jungle. Yeah. In order to unlock welcome to the jungle. Uh, you embrace the lyrics of the classic Guns N' Roses song, Welcome to the Jungle, We've Got Fun and Games, by playing something else than the Jungle <laughs> Book. <laughs> and that came in from, from Polsch 109. Thanks, Polsch. Uh, and then uh, the last achievement I've got that came in from Twitch chat is, this is Vine. And in order to unlock this is Vine, uh, have the Vine not spawn, uh, and then reset the game in order to have it appear. <laughs> And, yeah. and that came in from Kana. 
Uh, I've got one achievement of my own. Oh. Uh, and this achievement's called Lieutenant Dangler. Uh, in order to unlock Lieutenant Dangler, because there are snakes in the game, uh, mm -hmm. big danglers that hang from the trees. Um, in order to unlock Lieutenant Dangler, you get killed by a hanging snake and sit motionless in rage while the game animates vividly around you. <laughs> also, there's confetti falling on you. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, how much do you think this game is? If you were to buy the Jungle Book for the Super Nintendo, if we were to open up the vault <laughs> and pull out our... They should have done... Disney's Disney video games should have been in white clamshell cases. Yep. Like the videos, man. <laughs> uh, well, you had this one. I assume you got it in a lot. Yes. So I will say 535 Tyler? Actual retail value of the Jungle Book, the, the Jungle Book, for the Super Nintendo, loose mm -hmm. on average, according to price charting. At the time of this recording, I haven't been drinking. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I think I might be having a stroke. <laughs> God, uh, was is four dollars and seventy eight cents. You were very, close. very, very close. You're like what forty two cents off or something like that. Is it worth it? Yeah. Yeah, you have fun with it. I say yeah. I mean, I mean, there you can't buy. I mean, there are definitely better games you can buy for four dollars and seventy eight cents. But I mean, for like an actual physical cartridge, you know what I mean? It's just kind of like, yeah, I feel like that's, I feel like that's fair. Like if you get if you get it for under five dollars shipped, sure, you can have. Like I would go back and finish this. Yeah. It's not the worst game. I know we just shit on it, but it's not. It's really not, it's not the worst the game. Worst. You're right. And there are redeeming qualities to it. And it's like there. Are, I want to get past that force scrolling level. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. if I was a kid, or if I, you know, didn't have as many responsibilities as I do right now, I would absolutely go back and try to finish mm -hmm. this game. I'm not going to, but uh, <laughs> I, I would <laughs> test me. <laughs> Test me. Take away some responsibilities. Yeah, strip my responsibilities. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think I know the answer to this, but Tyler, do you think that this game, The Jungle Book, belongs on Tadpog's top 100 Super Nintendo games? I do not. Yeah, that's a soft no yep. for me. Uh, I think it's a little more firm from you, uh, which I get it. I do. I get it. Uh, I'm also, I don't know... I generally like platformers, I think. I think I might like platformers a little bit more than you do. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will. If platformers have a weapon you can swing, I like them infinitely more. Yeah. As opposed to like throwing fruit. Yep. <laughs> yeah. There throwing is. Like fruit or just jumping. Like, yeah. I, I like Mario's the exception, but like. Well, Mario's got Fire Mario. I yeah. Mean, any, any, any platformer that you also have a melee weapon, like I like a lot more. And I will also, like, one final thought that I have on the gameplay for the Jungle Book is I wish you could grab onto ledges. Yeah, it's fun. that is. That's a huge... Because it feels like you should be yep. able to because there are a lot of levels that are, if like, you can grab on the end of vines, to, Right. Yeah. And there are a bunch of levels you're, bar you're barely not able to jump on. It feels like you should be able to, like, Prince of Persia style, like, grab onto that, mm -hmm. pull yourself up. But whatever. 110%, yeah, you you're right. I got some more questions, yeah. Tyler, if you're interested in that. Fucking do it. I've got a quiz, a quiz that came in from one Ross Rachel Green from across the pond, entitled Jungle Book. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Ross, Ross begins, it's surprising how little happens when you are told not to leave the house. I did buy a bunch of retro game enamel badges, but I don't have anything to put them on. I can't really put them on my coat because I take that to work and I am expected to look at least somewhat professional. So they are just scattered on my desk. Someone very nicely bought me Valheim, which has got its claws in me like a more addictive strain of heroin. Uh, it's a classic, just five more minutes game. I built a nice little house, then noticed a tree had fallen down, so I should clear it out of the way. Then there was another and another. I know, I know that feel, Ross. Uh, although I haven't played it recently, uh, I, I'm, I know that feeling. Uh, Ross continues, uh, before I knew it, I was miles away and I was scared I'd get eaten by something, so I ran home. Anyway, you know what has 10 letters? Jungle Book. 
it's a shame I won't be bothering with them and just picking 10 games out of the list because I seem to use the same games over and over. <laughs> I'll give you the first letter as well. It's only fair. So, are you ready to begin, Tyler? I'm ready. This M is set in the year 2214. Earth has made contact with another dimension known as Other Side and send the titular hero who is the only one who can survive the trip. Who's a hero whose name begins with M who lives in the year 2214 and goes to the other side? Melvin. Mel- Melvin? Marvin the Martian. Sure. <laughs> he, could probably, he could probably do it. Marvin the Martian. Locking, he's not Earth. He's no. Mars. I don't know. Shit, I have no clue, no clue whatsoever. Schmelvin, locking it in. <laughs> it is, in fact, Metal Morph. Never heard of Metal it. Metal Morph. Maybe it will be randomly selected for us to play next maybe. week. I don't know. Or maybe ne- it'll be Tailspin for NES. I don't know. Oh, maybe. Next question. This M failed due to a spectacularly high price of $419 at release, but featured... An unusual peripheral. It's not Mario Paint, is it? No. That was not four hundred and nineteen dollars. Uh-uh. Start with an M. Mother three. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> you can have it, but it's four hundred and nineteen dollars. <laughs> trying to think of a, a a weird system. What are, I'm trying to think of, yeah, an unusual peripheral. Is this the Mario like sewing thing? Is that what this yeah. is? I can't remember what it's called. Mario sewing. It's like Mario sweatshirt or something. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> Locking it in. Mario sweatshirt. It is Miracle Piano. <laughs> okay. Is that in is that in Flopsy? Are we gonna have to figure out <laughs> how the have, fuck we're gonna how do it? We gotta order a Miracle, miracle piano. piano. Oh no. Uh Maybe we can just play piano. I'm using Phil Phil Hawk Dude, sandwich from Phil Hawkins jam and unclogging my ears with this pin cap. You guys are fucking grossing me out with that <laughs> shit last night. Like, oh my god, um, don't put pin caps in your ears, man. It's fine. <laughs> don't use keys, <laughs> please. Don't use keys. Uh, Miracle piano is not in Flopsy, so doesn't it's not real. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and mark that we got it correct. Yep, you can't give us fake stuff when right. you make up Ross. Nice try, Ross. Next question. In this M, the game spins around and around wildly in a circle and makes it difficult to continue in the right direction. Reviewers stated that it was enough to make players sick. That kind of sounds like... Um, oh, my God. I can't remember the name of the, of the fucking game where you're playing the... Oh, my God! I can't even fucking I can't even describe the game to you right now. It had those like contra overhead levels um where it was all like mode 7 and you could spin. Uh it was Jim Power, but that doesn't start with an M. Jesus. Mr. Jim Power. Mr. Does, though. Jim Power does. <laughs> <laughs> Jim James Power Senior. Here's the Miracle Piano. The Miracle Piano. Mm-hmm. How much? Like a thousand bucks? I saw like well, a bunch of digits. We bought on eBay for 150. Oh, okay. I'm not gonna. Well, fuck. <laughs> oh yeah, here it is for Nintendo. Here's the Nintendo box. Here's the Super Nintendo one too. Oh man, on eBay or just uh, just a picture? Just a picture. Does it come with a cart? The Miracle Piano teaching system. Oh shit, man. All right. Well, look, I'll look into that. <laughs> that seems like uh, a waste of money, but I'm interested in it. Yeah, because there, there's the NES cartridge. Wow. <laughs> wow, dude. Is that like, how big is the piano? That thing looks like it's pretty, like, involved. I mean, it's a full size, like, keyboard. That's nuts, dude. I wonder if it works with Mario Paint. <laughs> I <hope so. laughs> it probably does. not That'd be awesome, though. Mr. Jim Mr. Powers. Mr. Jim Bauer. Locking it in. It is, in fact, Mohawk and Headphone Jack. <laughs> Quit making shit up, Ross. <laughs> Next question. 
This P is a puzzle game where you face such opponents as a crab made out of a rice bowl and a beautiful laughing mermaid. That is puzzle pieces, Ross. Nice try. Puzzle pieces, locking it in. I have no idea what that is. It's pieces. It's pieces. Pieces is the answer. Okay. But it's puzzle pieces. Come on. It's puzzle. It's, it's a puzzle game. <laughs> where it's puzzle, you, make yeah, you, were, you were clarifying. Yeah, I get it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks. It's a Super Nintendo game? It is. Well, I think it might be a, uh, a European Japanese release. I don't, uh, okay. I don't know that we got it. I can check Flopsy. No, it's okay. It's whatever you want to do. I'm, in, I'm into it. Pieces. That's how you can cut my life. In two pieces. <laughs> yeah, look at that. North America had a North American release, Pieces. 1994, developed by Prism Kikaku. Yeah, all right. Love, love their shit. Yeah, they're really good. <laughs> they're real fucking good. Um, the, the pig on a mohawk, on a mohawk, on a moped mm-hmm. that I use in my stream intro yeah. is from Pieces. That's the only reason, uh, I, that's the only reason I do the game. And I still got it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I was so confident about it. Next question. This S is a game based on a cartoon of the same name and stars Clifford, Cornelius, Chester, Maxwell, and Angus. Cartoon that starts with an S. Street Sharks? Sure. I don't know. I I, I watched that once. I saw like one episode of it. Are there five of them? Probably. Probably. Are their names Clifford, Cornelius, Chester, Maxwell, and Angus? It sounds like... Cornelius kind of sounds familiar. All right. Just locking it in. Street Sharks. It is not letting me choose an answer. I don't know. Street Sharks it is. Yeah, I don't know. I can't click on it. Okay. We'll go with Street, street Sharks. Sure. Next question. This S is a 2D action platformer based on an animated series of the same name with RPG elements in which the player controls either Razor or T-Bone. I don't know why I said Razor like that, like it was Ninja Turtles. Well, the, the, the Street Sharks char- character names are Ripster. Oh, shit, we fucked up. Moby Lick, who is the, sh- <laughs> who is the whale. Well, I'm sorry, excuse me? Big Slamu. Oh, man, Big Slamu. Streaks? Oh my god. Yeah, so uh I don't think that so was it. Maybe that's their but maybe like Clifford, Cornelius, Chester, Maxwell, and Angus are like their Christian names. <laughs> Before they got turned into Street Sharks. Right. Don't worry, I'm Googling all of those names in sequence so we can get to the bottom of this fucking unsolved mystery here. The stone protectors. The stone, stone are you familiar protectors. with the stone protectors? Not at all. It is. Oh my god! It's the fucking trolls game. Yeah, uh, it's like that trolls. It's like the troll doll spinoff. Yeah, yeah. I've seen yeah. this. Ga- I think Drex played this game. Okay, back in I've the day. seen this. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. It had thirteen episodes. <laughs> in, a, in a goddamn Super Nintendo game. Did you ever have any uh, troll dolls? No, I didn't. No. I hated them. Yeah, I had. A, I had a couple. Uh. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't even know why they were popular. I, 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 I mean, they were all over the place in Mimi's desk and the Drew Carey show. <laughs> yeah, that probably helped a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> Tyler, yes, Dave. This S is a two D action platformer based on an animated series of the same name, with RPG elements in which the player controls either Razor or T Bone. Street Sharks. <laughs> Wait, we know that's not right. It wasn't a razor, razor or, or T Bone. It's not the Cowboys of Moo Mesa. That starts with a C. Yep. T Bone is definitely that's a cow name. That's a that's a bull name right mm-hmm. there. Razor also could be like Razor Wire. Razor Wire. Farmer got keep me in the Razor Wire <laughs> pen. <laughs> Otherwise, I fuck all the cows. Fuck them all up. <laughs> I'll hold down those cows and suck so their teeth. <laughs> Did you give me that milk? I'm gonna hold you down and suck it out. <laughs> Ooh, it's based on an animated series, RPG Elements. It's an action platformer. This is a hard fucking quiz right yeah. here. Shit, I have no, cl- no, cl- no fucking clue. What is an animated series that started with S besides Smurfs, comma, the? 
<laughs> mm. My favorite Smurf is definitely Razor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, uh, he's the all Snorks. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> Razor's always like behind Smurfette's house with a needle in his arm. <laughs> <laughs> Any other show that starts with an S? Street Samurai. <laughs> Street, <laughs> Street Samurai's locking it in. It is. SWAT cats. Okay. The radical squadron. I have, I have heard of that. I don't remember this. I've heard of SWAT cats. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next. We're doing great. Don't worry. This S is a port of a PC and Amiga game. It is an isometric RTS set in a dystopian future where corporations have replaced governments. Shad- Shadow, Shadow Run. Shadow Run. Yeah. <laughs> Shadow. Logging it in. Shadow Run. It is Syndicate. Also could be Shadow Run, though. It's totally Shadow Run. <laughs> All right, next question. This U is a one-on-one fighting game that has an interesting game mode where boss battles can be fought in a turn-based manner. Ultraman? Probably. Based on, I never played it, but based on your description a few episodes mm-hmm. back, it makes sense. Ultraman, locking it in. It is Ultimate Fighter. Mm. That was kind of close. Yeah. <laughs> First three letters. Yeah. <laughs> we got it. Uh, next question. One tenth credit. I don't think we've got a <laughs> single one of these right. No. The pieces. I mean, that was half credit. <laughs> I said puzzle pieces. <laughs> next question. This W is a space flight simulator where the main objective is to destroy enemy fighters, but there are multiple side objectives like clearing minefields. Is that Wing Commander? Wing Commander. Sure. Logging it in. It is warp speed. (laughs) Wow. I have never heard of like most of these games. Next question. This W was a port of an Amiga and Atari ST game that sees you play as Saul trying to rescue his father, Cal Morrow. What did it start with? W. W. Bush, comma, George. (laughs) Locking it in. Colon, a fooled man can't be fooled again. God, I forgot about that. Lockbox. Um, With your Bible, the story of Saul. With your Bible, the story of Saul. Locking it in, it is Wolf Child. (laughs) Wolf Child. What this communicates to me is we have so many shitty SNES games that we have to play for this show. I don't even know if they're all SNES games. Do you say they're all, they all are? I mean, that would be breaking tradition here. Let's see. Um, I won't be bothering with them and just picking 10 games out of the list. Wow. Yeah, I think these, all right. are, all, I think all these are. are all Damn. Super Nintendo games. Damn. I have one more question. Maybe we can redeem ourselves. This is our redemption question. You are offered the chance to buy a rare game at a fraction of the price. The caveat being that it was fished out of a septic tank and now resides in a bucket of human effluence. Santa right? Effluence? Does that mean poo? Probably. Okay. Emissions. Emission, <laughs> emissions. Uh, do you buy it in the hopes you can clean it and keep it? No. It's got to be ruined. There's, like, no, there's way. no way. There's no way. Unless it's like a PlayStation disc, you know, like, like an mm-hmm. optical. That label is fucking gone, dude. Yeah. And that label is important. It's so it's so important that like uh, so I've got like I I'm a crazy person and I have like a bunch of eBay notifications set up for like rare game like rare Super mm-hmm. Nintendo games because it's like maybe maybe I'll find you know like maybe want to get posted I can snatch it up real quick H- it hasn't happened yet but uh, maybe it'll happen but what I've discovered is there was a a copy of Mega Man X three. And it was like not super low, but it was like lower than I normally see copies of Mega Man X3. Mega Man X3 is an expensive game. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, I'll check this out. And I, so I tapped on it and it takes me to the, the auction page. And it is like, oh, that's a fake. What the fuck? Why are they selling a fake for that much? And then like in the big, like big letters are like, read the description, authentic cartridge, read the description. It's like, fine. So I read the description. It's like, this is an authentic cart. Here are photographs of the, the, the circuit board. This is an authentic cart. The problem is the label was destroyed and has been replaced with a reproduction label. And it's like, I got to be honest with you, dude, saving $30 
isn't worth. You know what I mean? Like if I'm gonna count right, if I'm gonna spend over a hundred dollars on a video game, you know what I mean? It's like yep. I'm gonna go ahead and spend the extra thirty dollars. May as well write Mega Man and Sharpie and right. peel, peel it off. Keith, underline yeah. it. Mega Man <laughs> X3. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Totally. So I mean, but I could tell. Like it seemed like this person was like, "Look, I understand. It looks like a fake. It's not, but." I don't know. It still kind of is, <laughs> you know, it ain't yep. in great condition. So no, I'm not buying the super rare game that's in the fucking yep. In this because look, For less than half. <laughs> if I'm worried about playing it, I'll just play it on the EverDrive. Yep. The only reason I'm buying games is to fucking collect them. You yep. know what I mean? And if I'm gonna collect them, I want them to be not smelling like shit and also like look decent. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm with you. No. Uh, Ross says, I probably would just to see if I could make it work. And not smell like ass. Good luck. Have I got a deal for you, Ron? <laughs> I mean, I could see, I could see wanting, seeing if you can make it work, like mm-hmm. taking that as like a challenge or something like that. But I mean, I think you could, depending on the game, you know. Mm-hmm. As long as there was no like current of electricity running through the cartridge when it was submerged in poo. I mean, it'd have to be something like truly incredibly rare, like. Like a Red River Crossing. Uh, I was thinking like the NES Championship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what it would. Ha- it would have right. to be something, have to be something like, that. like that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, there we go. Thanks, Ross. Thank you for the uh, absolutely ridiculously difficult uh, quiz. Yeah. Just sitting around your house, just thinking up hard <laughs> quizzes. If you were trying to prove something, consider it proved. Proved. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, you want to see what we're going to play next week? Uh, yeah, I do. I really do. Let's see if it's one of the games All that right. we've never heard of. I'm going to go grab this batter up peripheral. Right, please. Put one in on the ground. Please. My head on the other end, wild and crazy Hell kid yes. style. Do it. Point my nose in a hole in direction. Yeah. Say the prayer we all have to say. Hold that bat down. Suck its dick. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, ra- Come on, randomizer. <laughs> no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Stop. 452. New one? It's a new one. Mm. 452 is probably the. Um, You're really good at this. F's? I had to jinx it. No, it's ours. Ours. Mm. Some would say the better F. <laughs> <laughs> um, rad skating. You're actually. <laughs> Too e- close? Eerily close. <laughs> Radical Rex. Radical Rex. Radical Rex. Okay. Which is, I'm assuming, probably very similar to We're Back in Dinosaur <laughs> Story. I don't yep. know what Radical Rex is, but it's probably a platformer and it probably stars a T Rex, <laughs> is, my, is my guess. Are you looking it up? Yeah. I can I consult. Just, I can I just consult Flopsy. Know. But then we'll know how many stars it's that, got. That's true. We want to keep that a surprise. Radical Rex, not to be confused with Dino City. Uh, the cover art is a T Rex on a skateboard. I want to see it. <laughs> I want to see it. It's probably going to bring back angry memories. It's a baby T Rex on a skateboard. I have seen that. <laughs> that looks like that shred prehistoric pavement. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So it's a. St- it's a skating, skateboarding it's game. It's probably a skating platformer, I bet. I bet you're a fucking baby T-Rex on a skateboard, and you have to platform while doing it. There's no way that's like a trick-based wow. game, right? <laughs> I, hope I hope it's basically Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk stole everything from this. <laughs> oh, man, that would be great. Holy wow. shit. Okay. Radical Rex. R- I can roll with that. Radical Rex. <laughs> Radical Rex for Smash. Yes, please, God. He, but he's also a sword character. He just uses a skateboard <laughs> as a sword. Yep, that's that's how we sell it. <laughs> uh, we'll find out his ultimate smash, I'm sure, next week <laughs> when I know anything about the character. Absolutely. Anything. Just looking at the box art, it it gave me Turbo Graphics 16 vibes, mm. and I think it's because it's either like it looked like they were like, "Hey, man, Bonk's Adventures a thing." That's kind of what that Look, art we do, like a baby T Rex on a skateboard. On a skateboard. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> who do kids like? Bart Simpson, sir. All right. Well, I want him to literally eat the shorts off of humans and have a skateboard. <laughs> I swear to God, if there's not a shorts meter 
in Radical Rex. <laughs> I'm going to be really fucking pissed off. <laughs> Eat 10 shorts to earn a continue. <laughs> Hold down 10 kids and suck their dicks. <laughs> Radical. <laughs> oh, God. All right, Radical Rex. Radical I, bet, Rex. I bet it's real good, dude. Oh, it's going to be so good. <laughs> I bet it's real, real Oh, you good. know it's going to be so good. Oh, with a name like Radical Rex. Radical Rex. How can you possibly go wrong? <laughs> I hope it's at least fucking funny. I hope it's so bad it's funny. Shred prehistoric pavement is already <laughs> pretty funny. <laughs> I have a feeling we'll bring back a segment called Tyler Reads from the Instruction <laughs> Manual for Radical Rex. Destroy things that aren't real yet. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, you can catch this show in its entirety on YouTube. Yeah. Thanks, Backlog Banisher Backlog Dane. Backlog Banisher Dane. Um, you can also catch us on iTunes, Spotify, mm-hmm. um, Google Play, around Google Play. Yeah, I think that's still a thing. Tadpog.com, Facebook. Mm-hmm. All that, all that jazz. Yeah, we're pretty easy to find. Yeah, you just search for us on places. You'll find us. You'll find it. Just, just Google Tadpoles. It's fine. Find, find it's fine. You'll see things for tadpoles. Just things. You'll, you'll just see keep, things. Just for go tad, like two down more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're on the we're on the page. We're below tadpoles and tab dogs. Yeah, it's fine. You'll know it because it'll say Tyler and Dave in it. Yeah, <laughs> man, I swear to God, if someone names some tadpoles Tyler and Dave, we are fucked. <laughs> we are. We are. We are lost to the internet forever. Damn it. And if they start doing a podcast where it's like... We got to sue them for likenesses. We're going to have to, yeah. Jay and sure. Bob style. Yeah. We'll have, to go, we'll have to go to Hollywood. I love to think that this is a Hollywood production. <laughs> the Tyler Dave Tadpog st- or Tadpole story. I did it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um, hey, do you want to send us something? We're still... We have a few more packages to go before we might do our one more. One, one more, more package to one go. One more package. Just came in today. Before we'll work on our uh, our Great Eats episode. Yeah. And I think we'll probably... Oh, that reminds me. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a, a Patreon episode with Cthusius Jeff, mm-hmm. Star Fox Assault. That's going to be hitting real soon. Oh, hell yeah. It's true. And then I guess we'll... Do you want to do an all calls before the food video? Yeah. Yeah, I feel good about that, too. Yeah. I feel like people... Like on Discord... The bit.ly slash tadpog discord. They've been, do they've that, been, do yeah, that thing. they've been, they've been wanting it. Sounds good. The all calls. Um, but if you want to send us anything, you can send it to tadpog studios, care of, Na- care of Nicole Nance, PO Box 3785, Paducah, Kentucky 42002. Yeah. You want to call us? Uh-huh. This would make the next all calls. We already have a batch of calls to go through. So <laughs> yeah, for the next a one, a lot of calls 270 883 2555. You want to buy a shirt? Shirts.tapog.com. You want yeah. to buy a mask? Mask.tapog.com. Yeah. We're Tapog underscore podcast on Instagram and on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, most, I mean, second most importantly, Dave has a Twitch. Yeah, I stream. If you just go to Twitch and just search for Tadpog, you'll you'll find mm-hmm. that stream. I mm-hmm. stream on Friday nights and Sunday nights. Uh, so yeah, I'd love to see you there. I've been oh, playing yeah. Breath of Fire on Fridays. Not my favorite thing. My favorite thing to watch you stream. I'm really, so I'm really glad to hear so that. So good. Uh, and then it's, uh, it's it's the Twitch version of listening to low like lo-fi hip hop. Oh wow, <laughs> damn that is that is quite the compliment mm-hmm. for me because I do like to listen to a lot of lo-fi hip hop beats to study too, and or masturbate too. You your pick. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to it at work a whole lot. Yeah, so masturbate definitely. So when, when my boss is on time, like I'm gonna listen to some music. Okay, and I put that on. He's like, "What is this?" He's like, "It's pretty good." Well, okay, I like it. All right. All right. Okay. Um, but you know, most importantly, that Patreon. Yeah, we've got a Patreon. Pull that shit up real quick. Uh, I've got it in front of me. If uh, okay, if you'd like, or I can pass it over to you to read. I know you were having problems with the app last time. Yeah, if you want to go ahead. Okay, I've got uh, an increase from Paul Sh one hundred and nine uh, from the uh, the press beta cancel guys. Uh, I was just recently on an episode of theirs uh, about Valheim. Uh, looking forward to that coming out. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot of fun to record. Uh, we've got an increase, uh, a big increase from Cubicle Monkey. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Coronavirus Savior Cubicle Monkey. Uh, and then we've got a, a pledge increase from Circle Man as well. Thank you, Circle Man. Hell yes. And uh, this episode... He can, be, he can beat Triangle Man. Probably. He could definitely beat Triangle Man. Is that the best They Might Be Giants song? 
Mm, maybe. It was when I was a kid. It's See, still up my, there. My They Might Be Giants it begins and ends with Tiny Tune Adventures. <laughs> sure. I mean, those are, those are obviously the best. Mm-hmm. Uh, this episode was executive produced by the following people. Uh, these are the folks on Patreon who donate uh, $20 or more a month. Uh, thank you very much. We've got Usurper Grimm, God Emperor Alex Pena, Cousin David Galino, Cthusius Jeff Miners, Coronavirus Savior Cubicle Monkey, Zeus Laser, Steve Dixon, Plinko Nick Price, Clambro Cody Phillips, Lint Licker Joseph Phillips, Bantha Master, The Eightfold Daniel Abernathy, Time Lord Josh Edwards, Executive Producer Dig Dougie, Matt Gentile, a.k.a. Gentle G, Magical Sleeper, a.k.a. Big Dick Pie Baker, Chris Vaughn, Laud Mulaney Dennis, Pinball Archmage Chris Edler, congratulations on your marriage, and I'm sorry you couldn't be on this episode, Sandwich Pope Phil Hawkins, Drinksmith Joey Webster, Big Daddy Paul Anderson, and Master Cycle Baron Kevin Link. Thank you guys very much. Hell yes. Our theme song is Moves by Sycamore Drive. Link to that track on the show at tabbug.com. Hey, my closest out, Dave. Favorite Jungle Book character? The oh. slow hanging fruit, but I feel like we're never going to be able to do it again. Okay. This is our only opportunity to do it, Tyler. It's really important. It's true. Until Jungle Book 2. Until Jungle Book 2, yeah, of course. Huh. The ep- the, there's no Super Nintendo game for it. We're just gonna <laughs> we'll do it. Talk about it. <laughs> or d- Jungle Cubs. We'll do all the all the direct to video sequels of all the Disney Super Nintendo games. <laughs> can we can we stop and talk about how bad of a branding move it is to call your show with baby versions of the Jungle Book characters Jungle Cubs? Like, that is the most generic ass. Like, mm-hmm. if you were to just say to me, have you seen the latest episode of Jungle Cubs? <laughs> I'd never, like, it would be like, the, in the Google of my mind, Don't Jungle Book. make me hold you to this. <laughs> <laughs> jungle Book would be like 12th down on that list. You'd yeah. have to explain to me, it's Jungle Book, but with like, they're the babies version. They call it that. Call it right. Jungle Book, but smaller. Jungle Book babies. Done. It's Fucking uh, done. Jungle yep. Book, the Jungle Book, Jungle Book, Book Cubs, or yeah, anything. They it's got to be Cubs. Jungle Book. Jungle's not the brand. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Guys, fucked up. <laughs> Jungle, the animals before Mowgli was born. Book Cubs. <laughs> so until next time. Trop- tropical. tropical. Capricorn. Cap- Capricorn. Cap- Capricorn. I-, I need to work on my walking more. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, gotcha. And now a characterized dramatic reading. Now, I'm... <laughs> good, good, more. <laughs> now, I am the king of... The Swingers. Oh, the jungle. <laughs> the IP. <laughs> I- <laughs> I've reached to the top and <laughs> had to stop. You sounded and- like Josh for a minute. And that's, <laughs> and that's what's bothering me. I want to be a man. <laughs> man cub. And stroll right into town. <laughs> <laughs> and be just like all the other men. I'm tired of monkeying around. <laughs> it's so much better this way. Oh, Ubi Doo. <laughs> I want to be like you. I want to walk like you and talk like you. You see, it's true. An ape like me can be a human too. <laughs>